Good evening. This is the July 21st, 2022 meeting of the St. Mary's County Board of Appeals located in the commissioners of St. Mary's County meeting room of the Chesapeake building, 41770 Baldridge Street, Leonardtown, Maryland. I'm Chairman Dan Nikniowski and with four other board members, we have met our minimum requirement for a quorum and we will proceed with the meeting. Residents may view the meeting remotely on channel 95 or on YouTube. I will open up the meeting for public testimony after the presentations and testimony by the appellant and representatives have been completed. For in-person public testimony, you will be asked to state your name and address for the record and I will swear you in. You will then have three minutes to ask your questions or make your comments directly to the board members. Your comments will be recorded and heard by those of us in the Chesapeake Building, Channel 95, and on YouTube. After the public comment portion of the meeting is over, the case will be turned over to the board for any closing comments, members' discussion, and decision. And now I'll ask for a roll call of the members. Uh, good evening, Wayne Medensky. Good evening, Lynn, De Lynn Delahaye. And again, I'm Chairman Dan Nikniowski. Good evening, Rich Richardson. Good evening, Guy Bradley. Also in the audience are <coughs> Mr. Ron Payne, who is an alternate member. And also. Uh, yes, good evening, Steve Scott, board attorney. Okay, um, and again, there's St. Mary's County government supporting staff that are also here tonight. Mr. Bill Hunt, director of land use and growth management. Courtney Jenkins, acting deputy director. Stacy Clements, Planner 3 of Land Use and Growth Management, Sherry Young, Board of Appeals Recording Secretary, and Carly Maltby, Maltby, an intern working with us this summer. Also in the audience is Mr. Neil Murphy and Jim Gotch. In the, in the uh, media control room is Amy Carter, the video media producer. Um, with that introduction, we will have one public hearing case on the agenda this evening. And it is Three Notch Commercial Appeal, ZAAP 21-132-0003. And it's an appeal of the Planning Commission decision for the Royal Farm Store in Charlotte Hall. Before we start the hearing, for viewers at home, you will be able to see the staff and applicant presentations on Channel 95 or YouTube as these presentations are being shown. You can also see all of the documents that have been submitted for this case by going to board docs. Ms. Clemens will now demonstrate how to locate and use board docs. Stacy. Thank you, Chairman. Um, first, you would need to navigate to Let's see, right there, okay. Uh, St. Mary's, or uh, um, stmaryism.com, or the St. Mary's County website. And up at the top of the ribbon, we want to select the board docs tab. Once we've selected the board tops tab, this page will load. We would then would like to proceed to tonight's meeting, which is the Board of Appeals meeting for Thursday, July 21st, 2022. And in the middle of their screen, there's an icon for to view the agenda. And the agenda will then be populated on your left-hand side. Tonight's public hearing would be located under number four. You can select that and here you would have all the pertinent documents. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. We will now hear case number one, the only case tonight, and I will ask Stacy and Bill to please stand and take the oath. <laughs> please stand and raise your right hand. Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. And Stacy, I believe you're up. Okay, thank you. Let me load the PowerPoint real quick. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Our first agenda item is concept plan uh, 21-132-000003, Three Notch Road, commercial. The applicant seeks concept site plan approval for a 5,380 square foot convenience store with fuel sales and a 2,365 square foot fast food restaurant with a drive through the public notice for the public hearing was published in the St. Mary's News on May 6 and May 13, 2022, and the property has been posted in accordance with the CZO requirements, section 21.3.3, to the neighbors within 200 feet of the subject property on or before May 11, 2022. Certified mail receipts have been received and have been entered into the record for this public hearing as Exhibit 1. The agenda was posted on the website Wednesday, May 18th, 2022, and again on Wednesday, July 13th, 2022. Tonight's hearing is a request for a concept site plan approval. It is to be heard de novo, which means a fresh start, a new hearing record begins. Therefore, this staff presentation is a modified version of the presentation that was submitted to the Planning Commission. The site is located at 37590 Oaks Road and 30315 Three Notch Road in Charlotte Hall. The land use is mixed use moderate intensity and the zoning is town center mixed use. The property consists of 7.187 acres. The applicant seeks concept approval for a 5,380 square foot convenience store with fuel sales and a 2,365 square foot fast food restaurant with a drive through The site is located in Charlotte Hall, adjacent to Oak Road, Three Notch Road, and Charlotte Hall Road. A nursery was formerly located at the site, has, but has recently relocated. The land use for this property is mixed use, moderate intensity. Now Charlotte Hall has been designed as a town center according to the St. Mary's Comprehensive Plan. Town centers are urban in pattern and form, designed for moderately intense, intense residential, commercial, and industrial development, supported by provisions of community facilities and services. Additionally, per the comprehensive plan, they are designated as growth areas that are secondary to development districts, where infrastructure should be provided to support densities up to five units per acre, and where mixed use development should be encouraged. The zoning is town center mixed use. Okay. The regulations for town are six center mixed use district provide opportunities for residential and commercial development within town centers consistent with the comprehensive plan. Standards are intended to create an urban character and make the core area safe, pedestrian friendly, and visually attractive. Okay. They are proposing use type 60 fuel sales, which is establishments engaged in the retail dispensing or sales of vehicular fuels and lubricants or household propane. They also use type 48, a convenience store, which is a retail establishment engaged in the sales of prepackaged food products, household items, newspapers, and magazines and sandwiches and other freshly prepared foods for off-site consumption. Okay. Use type 74 is a restaurant, fast food. It's an establishment that offers quick eat in or take out food service, which is accomplished through a limited menu of items already prepared and held for service or prepared, fried, grilled quickly or heated in a device such as a microwave oven. Orders are not generally taken at the customer's table. Food is not served at the same table or <coughs> counter where the food is consumed. And food is generally served in disposable wrapping and, or containers. Yeah. Oops. 
and use type um, 115 is drive-through services, which are facilities for providing services to persons remaining in their automobiles. According to chapter 51.3 of the Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance, fuel sales use 60, convenience stores use 48, restaurant, fast foods use 74, and drive-through services use 115 are permitted use in the TMX district and require site plan approval. Okay. The concept concept site plan was reviewed at the TEC meeting held on February 24th, 2021. Okay. Now the applicant is prepared to address any issues and answer any questions that you may have. Um, this concludes the staff report. Are there any questions? Board members have any questions of staff? No, sir. No. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> In that case, then we will move on. And uh, Mr. Longmore, how many speakers will you have, sir? Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Um, Chris Longmore uh, with Dugan McKissick and Longmore for the record. It, it'll be myself speaking, um, and then the other members of our team, Nelson Orocho, the engineer on the project, will testify about the site plan, answer any questions you have about that. Jackie Chandler with Traffic Concepts, Inc. is also here uh, to speak about um, the traffic study that was performed and the improvements that are being proposed. Justin Rosemore is also here uh, in the audience as a representative of the applicant if we need any questions for him. He's not gonna be part of the primary presentation, but he will be available for questions. Yeah, we'll swear them in as they come up. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we do have a PowerPoint uh, presentation, Stacy, if you don't mind. Oh. Um, so uh, we appreciate your time tonight. Um, what I'd like to do is walk through a little bit of the, the summary of what we're here doing tonight and then a history of the, of the project uh, before this evening and then I'll turn it over to the engineers to speak to you about the details of the project. We can go to the next slide. Um, I apologize for that date. We, that was the original date of this hearing and, and it got continued to this date um, as we are here this evening to speak. The, um, this is an appeal from the um, Planning Commission decision that did not approve the concept site plan. Um, as mentioned in the staff report, and I know the board is aware, it is a de novo appeal, uh, which means among other things that um, we're required to present the information to you new tonight so you all can see what our application is. Uh, public testimony, of course, can occur again. Um, and also this board owes no deference to the Planning Commission on what they decided. Uh, essentially the rules are set up, so we're required to prove our case tonight. And if we do, you all have um, your ability to decide whether you agree with us or not. So there's no deference owed to the Planning Commission findings below. If we go to the next slide. Um, this is, again, a concept site plan, um, and I know these come before you only on appeal for the most part. Um, uh, I'll show you the flow chart in a minute um, as to how they're approved. All commercial uses and, and some other uses are required to get site plan approval, including concept site plan approval. It's found in Chapter 60, of uh, the Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance. Um, the Planning Commission has that authority to approve concept site plans. Um, and as I'll mention a couple of times, it's only one step in the overall approval process. It's not the final site plan where more engineering will be done after tonight to finalize all the plans. That's how the, the process is designed, but this is one step and a step that's fairly early uh, in the process. Uh, should we be successful tonight, uh, there'll be other comments from the county and state agencies and then the planning director has the ultimate authority uh, to grant the final site plan, which would occur at a later time. If we go to the next slide, this is the flow chart found in the zoning ordinance. I know that's very difficult to read, but that's the development review process found within our zoning ordinance. It's figure 21.1.A of the ordinance. If we go to the next slide, the relevant portion of that flow chart um, do you mind? Yeah, is there on the right. Um, so when there is a major site plan that's required, and there is one for this project, um, the applicant submits it, and then the first step is the submittal of that concept plan and the Planning Commission review. That's the step that we're on tonight, where it says Planning Commission. You're essentially sitting in their shoes in this de novo review. Um, should uh, my client get approval, then they submit their final site plan. There's, uh, they need all the agency approvals, and then the planning director uh, reviews it and confirms that it meets
meets all the requirements of the applicable um, ordinances and then there's a major site plan approval and then my client would be required to admit, uh, submit any permit applications, building permits and others to get those approval. So as you can see, we're fairly early on in the process um, of this project. Um, Again, you stand in the shoes of the Planning Commission and, and essentially decide whether we meet the standards. Um, and the role is limited to the concept site plan criteria. It does not go beyond that for any fight, final site plan approvals. Um, and we'll touch on, on some of the nuances of that as we go tonight. If we go to the next slide. Um, this is some more excerpts of the comprehensive zoning ordinance. Um, again, it requires that a concept site plan first be approved by the Planning Commission uh, before it can be processed by the Planning Director. Section 60.5 is the applicable criteria uh, for tonight, and, and I'll run through those in a moment. Uh, there, there are five uh, standards that we need to meet in order to receive approval. Um, and then, of course, there will be other uh, approvals that need to be obtained from the Planning Director at, at a later time at the final site plan approval. One of the notable ones that sometimes gets discussed at these hearings is the adequate public facilities requirements of Chapter 70. We think we can show that uh, we're clearly able to meet those with the, this project, but this board does not make a final decision on that. Your role is to decide whether we may meet that based on what our concept site plan has. That's the language in our ordinance. Um, if we go to the next slide, um, this is another slide about that adequate public facilities determination. And again, you're not required to make the final determination tonight. Um, staff can, can confirm if needed, but that will be a decision by Mr. Hunt and his role of director um, at the time of the final site plan. So if we go to the next slide, these are the criteria that we must meet tonight. So these are the, the five things, and I say five, our zoning ordinance lists six of them, but one is not applicable uh, because the growth policy has been uh, rescinded by the county and has not been put back in place. So the five standards we need to meet is we need to show that this project is consistent with the comprehensive plan and any other functional plans. We need to show that it may be served by adequate public facilities, and I touched on that earlier. Um, we need to show that it will promote the health, safety, and welfare of the general public. The fourth uh, standard that we need to meet is that it's, there's adequately developed recreational and other community amenities um, in accordance with the comprehensive plan and the zoning ordinance. And then the last standard is that we're consistent with Chapter 62 design objectives um, as they're found. That's the chapter of the zoning ordinance where those are found. If we go to the next slide. So to give you a little history about, and that's kind of a summary of the process we're in, this is more to give you a, a sense of the history of this project, where my client's been and, and how we got here tonight. Um, as mentioned by Stacy in the staff report, uh, this was reviewed in February of last year during the TEC cycle. Um, there were no objections from any of the TEC agencies, as can be seen in the staff report and the attachments. Um, we do ask that all the exhibits and board docs be made part of the record officially uh, for this hearing, um, as they always are. Um, there was a traffic study that was reviewed both by State Highway and the Department of Public Works, and there's no outstanding issues that have been raised uh, with our application at this time. My client did work through several issues with them to make sure that it would meet uh, their approvals, and that was done some time ago before the Planning Commission hearings. The first Planning Commission hearing took place on November 29th. Um, it was a rather lengthy hearing, as I recall. And during that hearing, uh, members of the Planning Commission asked my client uh, to, to make changes to the plans, um, what they considered improvements to the plans, and asked that my client consider that and come back a second night, which ended up being March, four, four months later. Um, my client, the uh, requested actions are listed here. Uh, one was to prepare a synchro analysis of traffic, um, which my client did, and we have videos of that should you need it later. Um, another was to revise some architectural and design of the Starbucks, uh, that's the fast food restaurant that's here, as you'll see on the site plan, um, to, to redo the architecture to make it more in line with the Royal Farms and to be more consistent with the patterns of the neighborhood. Uh, there was also a request to add a crosswalk on Charlotte Hall Road uh, connecting to Three Notch Trail. 
Um, there was a request that sidewalks be added along all three sides of the property that front public roads. Um, as you'll see from the site plan, um, there are three roads that it, that it fronts, and that was a, a request to make pedestrian sidewalks uh, throughout that. Um, there was a request to provide infrastructure for future electric vehicle charging stations. That was a concern raised by one of the planning commission members, um, and that my client was requested to consider that. Um, there was coming off of Oaks Road, um, my client had designed it, I believe, with two left turning lanes and one through on a right lane. Um, and the planning commission members asked them to reconsider that configuration because they believed a different one would work um, and gave them that feedback. And then the final one was to review the left-hand turn lanes off of, uh, from Route um, 235, sorry, I left the, the route number out there, onto Oaks Road and Mount Wolf Road. Um, all of those my clients addressed and, and adopted or addressed, um, changed their plans to do that. Um, they came back four months later with all those changes made as requested and the Planning Commission still denied the application. So that's why we're here uh, before you uh, with our appeal. If we go to the next slide, um, the other thing that, so those are changes that were made from the original concept site plan. We think they improved the project and my clients are still willing to do those that they offered to, to do at the Planning Commission. They stand by them and are willing to, to also do those. Uh, my client has also heard the concerns of some of the community members at the other hearings we've had. Um, so there are a couple of additional changes that our engineers can address tonight um, if the board has questions of it. One is to add some new traffic control members, at the or control members measures rather, at the four-way intersection of Charlotte Hall Road and Oaks Road. There were several community members that came out and said that even though the speed limit was correct there and that it met all the requirements, there were still safety concerns there of the community. So Ms. Chandler will highlight later in her presentation some traffic control members measures that we're gonna propose to try to make that safer, again, listening to the, the uh, public that was here last time. Um, another change um, or addition that my client has made is to offer flex fuel or E85 fuel um, at this um, Royal Farms. Um, this provides more options and, and uh, an innovative, environmentally friendly option for fueling. I will note, and I'd ask that this be made part of the record, um, that there is a petition that was online um, that uh, began by a Donald Cheney um, to support this project because of the additional offerings of Flex Fuel E85. As of this evening, when I printed this out, uh, there were 754 people that it says had signed that petition to support it. For this project? For this project, yes. Uh, I will add, I'll present this to Stacy and ask that this be made part of the record. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry. Thank you. We were happy to see um, that public support of it, and we think that this fuel option, and as it's mentioned in the in the um, petition that was put out there, that is not an offering that um, is made at most gas stations within our county at this point, so it'll be another offering for those fuel efficient vehicles that, that it supports, and we think that that's a nice addition uh, to the project. So if we go to the next slide, what I'd like to do now is ask Mr. Arocha to step up. I'll, I'll step off to the right here and let him start presenting the site plan um, so you can see. And again, he'll need to be sworn in, Mr. Chairman. And this is... Hold it right here. Oh. Um, would you please stand and raise your right hand? Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give are the whole truth and nothing but the truth? And for the record, would you state your name and who you're associated with? Yes, sir. My name is Nelson Orocho. I'm a professional engineer in the state of Maryland. I work with Bay Engineering, and I'm the uh, project manager for this project. Okay, go ahead. All right. Sorry, where I have to print big, big print here. I wear bifocals in it. Else, so we have uh, the proposed site here. Just to start off, though, the part the project is made up of three parcels. Uh, the intention is to actually do a lot line adjustment and reduce it to two pieces. Um, the intent uh, is to have uh, the uh, to the north or plan right the uh, Starbucks on a lot and then the Royal Farms on a lot 
uh, what you uh, see, just to give a general idea, and I'll get some more detailed, let me turn this, I guess, more detailed information. Uh, if you look at the plan uh, top left or, or to the west, uh, you'll see uh, the septic area. The area closest to the corner is the septic area for the Starbucks, and below it is the septic area that will be for the uh, for the Royal Farms, uh, and there's a, a sliver of property that connects the septic area at the corner uh, along uh, Charlotte Hall Road that uh, will basically uh, allow the septic areas to be on their on the proper parcels for for each lot. This way, there's no easements, no issues. The, the septic areas will be on the the respective. I'm, uh, I'm sorry to, to yes, interrupt sir. you. Can we drop the bottom half out of that and then expand it? Uh, or not? This is a PowerPoint. Um, no. No. Just. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I get. I mean, it's still kind of hard to see. Mm -hmm. Mazinski, when you say the bottom part, mm -hmm. you mean the the typed? Yeah, all the typed down. Don't even. If I'm not mistaken. I think I there's an, another sheet in this presentation. I'm sorry, sir. In there. I have a full size sheet. If you want to pass it, if, if that's well, all right with you, I'll. No, no, I'm. Okay. All right. I was just trying to, because everybody, I'm sure nobody in the audience can tell what that is. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, and I'm. Uh, and, Understandably so. I'm trying okay. to do my best to describe that uh, the, the the visual there. Yeah. Um, so as you can see, the the, um, the the intent is to again to provide a uh, the Royal Farms, which is a fuel and uh, and, the, and the convenience store, and then the Starbucks, which is the fast food. Um, the current use is the uh, is now um, uh, no longer in use, but it was the Wentworths. Uh, landscaping uh, uh, air, uh, store and sales and um, and the um, the area with, with respect to our design uh, meets a requirement of what's called redevelopment because of the yeah, the uh, the good. intensity of the impervious area on the site um, the uh, the total acreage of the, of the property again it's uh, it's, it's 7.87 approximate acres. The two parcels will be uh, almost split evenly. 3.92 for the World Farms parcel, 3.95 for the, uh, the Starbucks. So it's, it does an even distribution of the, of the property. You can see there uh, on the plan, the impervious area is centralized. The lot as proposed have um, extensive buffering. Uh, we meet the requirements for all the setbacks and the buffering. Uh, the, uh, the area originally, as far as an impervious area, I just should probably note this, that the, um, uh, the original site, or as it exists today, if you went out there, uh, it has 4.74 acres of impervious area. Uh, the intent is to develop it so that there's only 2.69 acres, which would be a reduction of 2.05 acres. And that would give us 5.18 acres of, let's say, green space or green area. And that would include all the landscaped areas and buffers uh, surrounding it. We are meeting uh, our requirement as far as stormwater management, providing e uh, environmental site design to the maximum maximum extent practical ESD to the MEP and uh, meet those requirements that, uh, we, that we need to do that. Uh, parking, uh, the, as far as parking is concerned, we meet the parking requirements um, and we are providing public water to the site. I should mention that coming from uh, on the northbound excuse me, southbound side of uh, Route 5 or Three Notch Road. Uh, the water is coming uh, by the existing gas station, by Oaks, and it ends there. We will continue it up along our entire frontage to the point where you see the entrance on Three Notch Road, and then bring the water up and around uh, Oaks to the other entrance, providing fire hydrants and such required for fire safety. Uh, 
uh, and there will be an internal fire hydrants also in the site for those reasons too, for coverage uh, for, for, uh, for fire safety purposes. Um, I think. Do you want to go to the next slide? That, that's sure. the color one that might might help to. Okay. Give me this. It's a green space, right? Yeah, yep, yeah, exactly. And in this, you can see the, the highlight of the green space, and the uh, again, the centralizing the uh, the proposed development area uh, uh, so that the intensity with regard to really everything is really within within the site, leaving uh, adequate, uh, really sufficient, more than sufficient buffering with respect to the the proposed work that's uh, that's shown. Um, again, uh, I mentioned the stormwater management, and uh, if you're just for the sake, if you're wondering, the site drains from left to right or from north to south. Uh, there's an existing uh, drainage ditch between the budding property uh, to the uh, to the north or to the plan right, and there will be um, a stormwater management device down at the low end of the, of the property. There, it'll be a submerged gravel wetlands and. Uh, Again, uh, this is a site that has no stormwater management as it currently exists and obviously will be enhanced with the, the uh, proposed uh, stormwater management as intended. So Nelson, you mentioned that it meets all the buffer requirements. To the best of your knowledge, are there any variances required to, as proposed with this development? No, sir. Okay. You wanna go to the next slide is your general notes, I think, I don't know if you wanna highlight. Yeah, and and these these were I spoke to uh, to them a little bit already with the, the areas, um, the lots, all the um, the al allowed required imp uh, requirements we've met with respect to parking uh, setbacks, uh, uh, in, uh, open space, uh, and so forth. We uh, meet or exceed those requirements. Uh, both on what's proposed lot one and for uh, proposed lot two. Okay. Stacy, maybe we go to the next slide. Um, Sir? Nelson, this is a landscape sketch plan. Is there anything you'd like to highlight for the board off of this slide? Um, I think it speaks for itself with regard to the amount of uh, landscaping um, and buffering that will be, be there. Obviously, there seems to be a dead spot uh, to the upper left or uh, west, but that's because that's a septic area and they're not gonna, health department will not let, let us uh, plant uh, in that area. But it will be a, a green space uh, and, uh, and, and so uh, there's enough, no impervious area in there. But where we, uh, with, where, the, where we're uh, able to, we're providing the adequate landscaping. Uh, also too, um, just wanted to mention, again, it was, um, uh, Mr. Longmore mentioned that one of the changes that happened with the site plan is we're providing a sidewalk around the entire frontage of, you know, of uh, uh, Three Notch, Oaks, and Charlotte Hall. So there will be a sidewalk along the entire street frontage all the way around and then up to the top corner, um, which is uh, the most southerly, southwesterly corner of the property is where there will be a cross, uh, a crosswalk going uh, over, uh, across the road, then to, um, then uh, some additional work, some concrete on the other side to match the existing walk to, to, to meet up with the trail. And then uh, Ms. Chandler will speak about all the uh, actual traffic uh, measures um, that will be, uh, will be implemented there with that uh, with that proposed work. Yeah. All right. Guess, um, and if we go to the next slides, uh, these are the, um, uh, what was requested as uh, changes for the Starbucks. Uh, the initial meeting we had with uh, the Planning Commission was that they wanted the two to be similar in kind of color and texture. And so we came back with those changes and this was acceptable uh, uh, at our second meeting uh, with the Planning Commission as far as the architecture and the, uh, the changes that were requested. 
but we can just flick through those. It's, um, and then again, you can see the, the stone work and the colors uh, of it. And then as you get to the end of the next, um, so you get to the next slide, then you'll see the rural farms. And again, they, they sort of mimic that uh, water level, that stone, you know, that's at the bottom, the color match, and the, and the tones are similar to, to get it, uh, again, as best they could matching. Um, so those were the color renderings. And I think... Um, if, if I can just ask a couple sure, quick follow-up questions. One of the uh, concerns that was raised at our prior hearing related to lighting on the site, can you talk about um, how that'll be handled generally? Yeah, so um, these days, almost all sites that we, we now develop, we're required to do what's called dark sky friendly implementation. And what that is is that, and you see it even in Smeco, bg &E lights that are street lights, they have shields in them. If you've noticed the, the street lights, you go by, they're shielded at the top to deflect the light down to minimize the, the, the light pollutions as best possible. So uh, when we go to the next step, of this site plan, you know, assuming that you know, the board would give us approval, we would do uh, photometrics to make sure that the, 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 the spread of the light is is minimal. As uh, you know, there's a safety uh, uh, factors that you have to have for lighting around facilities, and you meet those. And then, as you get to the border of your property, you try to minimize it as much as you can, so you don't throw light on the adjoining properties or, or excessive lighting. And so that's that would be the intent that we would be. Uh, designing the site too. <laughs> and if you can confirm that, that's great. If not, I'll ask Mr. Rosemore. The, do you remember concerns previously raised that there might be idling trucks that would make noise on the site? Yeah. Delivery trucks? Yeah, so what I understand, and uh, Mr. Rosemore could probably confirm this, but uh, and, and I think it was stated at the, at the Planning Commission meetings that uh, there is specifically uh, is, is um, part of the agreement with the, the, the rural farms is that they are to have no idling trucks on the property. And they're willing to put signage up to That's confirm correct. that. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. And do you recall, maybe Mr. Rosemore can confirm this, the deliveries typically take place around 10 a.m. at the correct. Royal Farm Store, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, I think those are the questions I have for Mr. Rocha, if the board has any questions. Have any questions? Well, I'd like to, since there, you mentioned the seven changes that the Planning Commission wanted, yeah. And, and while we have you here, I would like you to go over those. That, okay. And one of them being the charging station and, you know, that type of thing. He, he mentioned the sidewalk already. Yeah. Right. So I'm just getting my list so I can, and Mr. Rosemore can confirm this as well if we need it as a representative of the applicant. Um, one, of, one of the items, they, the first one that I, that I mentioned was the planning commissioner requested a synchro analysis of traffic. Um, that was done by Ms. Chandler. She shared it with them. She has videos of that analysis. She can show that to you should you, you care to see them. Um, we think it meets all the traffic requirements, but that was something that some of the planning commissioner, commissioners uh, wanted. The second uh, was to re revise the architecture and design of the Starbucks. And I believe that Mr. Richard spoke to that. The, the request there was to make it more consistent with Starbucks so they would be complementary of each other. Uh, so my client went back to, to Starbucks and worked with them to make sure it was to a design that would work uh, with their marketing, um, and, and they agreed to that. Um, the third was to add a crosswalk on Charlotte Hall Road connecting to Three Notch Trail. Um, I think you touched on that, and Ms. Chandler has an exhibit that she'll show the design of that uh, as well, so you can see how that connects to the trail. Uh, the fourth was to add sidewalks along all three sides of the property that front the public roads. My client is doing that um, and is willing to include that in the um, project. Uh, that provide infrastructure for future electric vehicle charging stations. Nelson, can you speak to that or Mr. Rosemore can confirm that? I'll, I'll, I'll just touch on it briefly. Uh, uh, I think with the, um, uh, with those charging stations, it's, I don't want to use proprietary, but Tesla is the, the one who provides these typically. And so uh, they generally an, um, uh, review sites and then analyze them if, they feel that they are sites that they're adequate and they should be on. So it's a it's kind of a working relationship between the developer and so forth. And I think I don't know what the latest 
kind of agreements were or where it left, so probably best if uh, Justin Rosemore would probably speak to okay. where the... Maybe I could ask Mr. Rosemore just to step up because he's not planning to speak, if you sure. don't mind. If you mind just addressing that? You'll need to be sworn in. If you state your name and... Justin Rosemore. And your association with... Uh, so I'm the developer. Okay. Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. You may proceed. So the electrical chargers will be installed. So I spoke with... Oh, I'm sorry. That's the voice. Not working? Do you want to... Uh, the electric... Can you... That, Okay, um, so you gotta get really close to this microphone. Uh, the electrical chargers will be installed. So we have secured the electrical chargers. They will be installed on the Royal Farms lot, not just the infrastructure. Do you, you know, know where they'd be located? Uh, that, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, it's okay. gonna be part of the electrical plan. Okay. Um, usually they like to have visibility, uh, so they can put their, their name up there if it's Tesla or one of the others. Uh, so it's probably gonna be close to the road, but I can't say for sure until the electrical plan is completed. Okay. Are the chargers gonna be adaptable for different electrical vehicles, or are they strictly gonna be for Tesla? So they should be adaptable. Uh, some of the more recent Tesla chargers have become adaptable to other types of vehicles. Um, but now we've secured a relationship with some of the other electrical chargers. Um, and so more than likely, it's gonna be a universal electrical charger, not a Tesla dedicated charger. Tesla is currently across the street at Wawa. So we would look to put a different type of charger. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes, uh, Mr. Longo, who can speak to the market analysis on why this site was chosen? Um, that would probably be Mr. Rose more, more, more than the name is. Uh, who's decided this was a very good site? Uh, I've seen some paperwork that says there's five other gas stations and convenience stores within a couple right. of miles. Yeah. Um, so the uh, – is it – is it okay if I pull this out? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's a little bit easier. Um, so Royal Farms and Starbucks are both interested in this site and both have done their own analysis. I, I'm the developer, so I don't have you know access to that analysis. Um, but traditionally, you know, they like to be you know in area you know with a lot of growth, uh, areas that have a good amount of traffic, uh, a lot of people out on the street already, so they can pull them into the site. Uh, to buy coffee at the Starbucks or, you know, gas at the rural farms. It's not uncommon to have rural farms uh, near Wawa's, you know, because they tend to compete with one another, you know, which results in lower gas prices, better cost on convenience items. Um, but uh, their exact analysis I, I do not have access to, unfortunately. Okay, uh, along the same lines, who's going to be your customer? I local local people. Uh Transit people? Yeah, it, so mostly for, I mean, from my experience, just talking from my experience, um, it's mostly transit. You know, the majority of people that uh, go to Roll Farms or Wawa or uh, any of the other large uh, convenience stores, gas stations are passerbys. You know, people on the street, whether they're coming from out of town and heading somewhere else, you know, they want to stop, they want to pick up their coffee, they want to refuel their car. Um, speaking for myself, it's not common that I, you know, jump in my car from the house and run out and say, you know, I'm going to fill up my car with gas. It's usually when I'm already out on the street, you know, going to a grocery store or going to work uh, or heading home from work, you know, you stop at the gas station to fill up your car and pick up convenience items. So, so if I understood you correctly, you're talking that your customer base is basically commuters? From my understanding, yeah, that's the majority. I, I Once again, I do not uh, run the gas station uh, or the convenience store or Starbucks, but I believe, for the most part, it's speaking from my experience, it's been commuters. It's been passerby traffic. You know, people who are already out on the street and see, you know, uh, roll farms or, you know, a convenience store with gas and decide they need gas or need convenience items. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Any other questions? 
Yeah. Not at this time. Mr. Rosemore, very briefly, um, and Mr. Medinsky, you had asked about the other um, yeah. improvements. There are two others relating to traffic that the Planning Commission asked for that was to redesign the turn lanes off of Oaks Road onto Route 5 there to have two different configurations the Planning Commission could consider. Ms. Chandler can speak to that. We've reviewed both of those, and both of those meet the requirements of the ordinance, so, so either uh, will work. And there was a review of the left-hand turn lanes off of Route 5 onto Oaks Road and, and onto Mount Wolf um, in, in their respective uh, directions that she can speak to. Justin, one more, one more second. Uh, two of the things that we're offering that were not raised at the Planning Commission that I mentioned in that same discussion, the one of them was the offering of E85 flex fuel. Correct. Justin, you just want to speak on that? Just sure. Get it um, so last time before the Planning Commission, you know, there was this petition that was started uh, to uh, bring alternative type of fuel, uh, this E85, uh, to uh, Charlotte Hall. Um, so the petition was started. We weren't aware of it at the last Planning Commission or else I think we would have brought it up then. Uh, but we found out about it shortly thereafter that there was a strong interest in having E85 here. Uh, so I, being the developer, went to Rural Farms, expressed to them that the community feels this is something important for them. And so Rural Farms has committed to bringing E85 gas here. The, the, the petition signers, are they local or tri I, area? I, from my understanding, they are. I spoke with the guy who started the petition, and he was describing that, you know, there's not a lot of access to this E85 gas, uh, and that it's very important to these guys who are in the surrounding area to not have to drive a distance and to have access to that E85. Uh, rural Farms tries to, you know, bring to the community what they desire, uh, so they agreed to do that. And in case everybody doesn't know, could you explain the E85? I have to be honest, I would have a hard time explaining it. I don't know too much about fuels. Uh, it's, you know, an ethanol blend uh, that certain uh, race cars or, you know, certain types of cars uh, perform better with the E85 gas. And this is from my limited experience. I'm not, you know, not very knowledgeable on the gas. But it is something that certain people like to have for certain types of cars. Um, that's the extent of my knowledge on it. And our understanding from the petition that was started, it's a group that um, has various vehicles. They have a, a club that meets regularly that desires this fuel. It runs cooler on the engines. It's more fuel efficient. It is a higher ethanol concentration. It also has higher octane in it. Um, so it tends to be less pricey than, than other gasoline because a big portion of the blend is ethanol instead of, instead of the traditional gasoline blend. So that's what, what um, we've learned. Um, but, uh, Mr. Longmore, sorry, but you can't verify that everybody that signed a petition is local, or even a large majority of them are local. No, we can't. I mean, we present it for, for what it is. We found it and thought it might be something the board may wish to consider. Um, the gentleman that Mr. Rosemore spoke to is local uh, that started it, but, but that's correct. We're not here saying that we can verify every signature on there is from the neighborhood. That, that's okay. correct. Um, and then Mr. Medinsky, the last thing was a tra some traffic control, control measures on Charlotte Hall Road. Ms. Chandler is probably the best to speak to those um, as well. Do I need to sign out or anything? Or hey, we'll Oh, that's it. <laughs> Sorry. So Mr. Rocho is certainly here if you have other questions of him, but I guess at this time we can ask Ms. Chandler to come up unless you have other questions um, of him. Who, who do I ask the questions of the entrances, um, site distance, not so much site distance, but acceleration, deacceleration lanes, location, distance from intersections, turning movements. That's what Ms. Chandler is planning to present as part of her traffic analysis. Can, She's with can. traffic concepts, but Nelson can also speak to some of that as well. I don't know, do you want to, to give just a as far as uh, uh, chair, just as far as the uh, the spacing of the entrances, mm -hmm. um, so the the the, uh, the entrance on uh, on Three Notch uh, Road was set um, at at where it would work with respect to a uh, the deceleration lane, and then the site like you said a site a site distance from the intersection. Um, SHA has looked at 
the location of it and agreed upon the location of the of the um, of the entrance with respect to both site distance and and the um, the traffic coming in and coming out. The entrance is a, a right in, a right out. So I, I didn't mention that before. I apologize. On Three Notch Road, um, and then the uh, on Oaks Road, that entrance was pulled as far away from the intersection as we could. The limiting factor with that was the septic system. So we, you know, with the septic system went with the perks and the, the area required was was maxed out, and the entrance was pushed away as far as we could for the intersection to to make that workable. And then the improvements that uh, Jackie, uh, Ms. Chandler would be talking about uh, that were um, then proposed with that entrance configuration. Okay, are, are there, is there gonna be any lane widening on Maryland Route 5? There will be a, uh, there will be a widening. There's an ad additional lane and I think at this point, it's probably best if I turn it over to Jackie and she'll talk about those specific things that were negotiated and discussed with SHA. Don't leave yet. <laughs> Ms. Chandler, would you state your name and who you're associated with for the record? Who you are associated with for the record? For the record, Jackie Chandler with Traffic Concepts. Okay. Um, would you raise your right hand? Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. And you may proceed. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, again, Jackie Chandler with Traffic Concepts. Uh, my firm prepared a traffic impact study for this development and um, as required by county adequate public facilities, we look at the capacity of intersections. Uh, we looked at the three site access points as well as each intersection on the triangle. So that's Maryland 5 at Charlotte Hall Road and Maryland 5 at Mount Wolf and Oaks Road and also the four-way stop at Oaks Road and Charlotte Hall Road. Um, since the project is in the town center, uh, the level of service that's required is a C or better, and that is a capacity test. Um, so from a capacity standpoint, every intersection works at an acceptable level of service C or better, except Maryland 5 at Mount Wolf slash Oaks Road. Um, that intersection is projected to be a D level of service, which again is pretty typical for a town center type of area, um, however, it is required to be a C or better. So we did offer um, road improvements to improve the intersection to a C. Uh, those improvements include widening of Oaks Road, so it'll be three lanes out. Uh, we initially came in with um, an offer to do two left turn lanes and then a separate shared through right. Um, discussions at the Planning Commission. The Planning Commissioners um, thought that maybe it was better to have a separate right turn lane and have the center lane shared as a through left and then an additional left. Um, we looked at that. We looked at both of those um, options. They would both bring the level of service to a C or better. Um, another improvement that we suggested um, there is an issue with the length of the existing left turn bay southbound on five to turn left on Mount Wolf. Although this project would not add vehicles to that because it's on the opposite side, um, the developer did offer to extend that turn bay as well. Um, and then along the frontage, uh, uh, for the, the next slide please. Uh, maybe it's one back, I'm sorry. Oh, back one more. That one. Um, we prepared this concept plan just to sort of show what was happening along the frontage because it was the frontage of Maryland 5 um, because it was hard to see on the big slate plan. 
so the intent here is to, there's an existing right turn lane southbound to turn right onto Oaks Road. So that would be extended all the way back past the property line. So it would become an auxiliary lane. So it would operate, you could turn right into that proposed right in, but you can also come out as the right out into that lane as well. And also shared as the uh, right turn for Oaks. Um, next slide. This was um, an exhibit that uh, Mr. Orocho prepared to show the road sections um, with the proposed improvements for each road. Next slide. Um, this was the, the first improvement I was explaining, the widening on Oaks Road where we show a double left and then a shared through right, which again could be a separate right turn lane so you could make a right turn on red and then we could share that with the through. Either way, um, this improvement will improve the intersection to an acceptable C or better level of service. So Mr. Chandler, Ms. Chandler you said that the uh, intersection as it exists today is a level D, is that, is it that correct? It exists as a C, and when we add background and growth, it becomes a D, and then it stays a D with the uh, traffic added by the project. Okay, but with these improvements, it, it would become a C level would, of service. Correct. Right? Okay. Thank you. Um, as you can see on this plan as well, um, some additional works required in the median area there to make sure that the double left can occur. The next slide. This was the extension of the southbound left turn bay that I discussed um, based on our traffic simulations that we prepared. Um, this lane really needs to be about 200 feet longer. So this developer has agreed to extend that as well. And Ms. Chandler, I believe you said this earlier, that improvement will take care of traffic that already exists today turning into the, the Wawa site, correct? Not, not into the site that's being proposed here today? That is correct. Okay, so the developer is offering to improve an existing uh, difficult situation that does not directly improve his site. Is that a fair statement? Correct. Thank you. Next slide. This was our levels of service just to show um, when we came back to the Planning Commission the second time and they requested us to look at um, changing that lane use for those three lanes out. Um, this was an exhibit that showed that we could still get a C level of service with either of those options. Um, so the developers open to stripe it however the, you know the county prefers. Next slide. And then uh, listening to testimony from residents, local residents, um, there was a lot of concern with the intersection of the existing four-way stop, um, Charlotte Hall and Oaks Road. So we did take a closer look at that um, and did come up with some ideas for safety type improvements. Now, this intersection, again, operates from an acceptable capacity standpoint, but there was concern with some safety issues. Um, this concept plan, what, what we did was uh, we overlaid Mr. Rocho's plan. So the blue lines show sidewalk um, that's proposed on the plan along Oaks Road and, and Charlotte Hall Road. So they're already planned with the development. Um, and the crosswalk across Charlotte Hall and a proposed section of sidewalk just to get to the trail. Um, Understanding that folks that are biking along the trail would likely want to stop at Starbucks or Royal Farms, so um, we'd like to get them across there safely. Some of the other issues we saw, we, uh, we heard there were a lot of um, folks that were running the stop signs. Um, so we did notice there, there are no stop bars marked today. Um, that's a big concern because when people come up, you know, they don't necessarily see the stop sign or look for the stop sign. Um, and typically, if you have a stop bar, which is the white line across the, the road, it's, it's a little more indication that you should stop. So um, we would like to put those on all four corners um, just to enhance that. 
um, relocate a, the stop sign that's there coming out of Oaks Road eastbound. Uh, relocate that a little bit closer to the intersection and then also enhance the crossing for um, the bike trail. You're not proposing a stop sign just before you get to the, to the uh, bike trail heading in an east direction on Oaks Road? Double stop, we would have double stop signs. Mm -hmm. um, I would be concerned now people turning right from Charlotte Hall Road on the Oaks Road going west. I'm sorry. Um, people going south on Charlotte Hall Road and they make a right turn onto Oaks Road to go west, they won't be stopping. Don't you think that'll give the, uh, a false sense of security to people on riding bikes or walking or jogging on the trail? Right, well the trail is already there, so our idea was to enhance the crosswalk. I understand about enhancing the crosswalk, it's the stop sign before it that, that, that concerns me a little. Right, uh, yeah, I'm not sure that we could get a stop sign in that direction, I can look at that a little closer, but um, it is close to the intersection. Well, obviously it would be to remove the other stop sign before you get to the cross, uh, the, the mm -hmm. trail crossing. Right. And think about that, please. Yeah, we're, we can definitely look at ways, um, additional ways to improve that, but th these were our first ideas at trying to help with the safety issue. Okay. We'd have to work with the Pu Department of Public Works and Transportation for the, to get this through the process. What about caution lights at the crossings? Um, caution lights like what they have on certain parts of the other, uh, other parts of trails down here, or if you're gonna cross the road, you activate the lights. Did you guys consider that? We can consider that. Um, we would have to look at, you know, the amount of pedestrians that are using a trail in this area to see if it's warranted. That would be working through the Department of Public Works as well. Hmm. Why would it matter about the amount of pedestrians or the number of pedestrians using the trail to make a decision on something like lighting? There, there are, um, similar to a traffic signal for vehicles, there are warrants that have to be met. And are those driven by state, county? What, what drives that level? This would be a county decision at this location, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Ms. Chandler, just to, to clarify, I know you've done the, the traffic review of this project. Um, you reviewed the adequate public facilities provisions of our zoning ordinance, is that correct, as it relates to traffic? That is correct. In your professional opinion, um, did the plans as presented, may they meet the adequate public facility requirements of traffic within our ordinance? Yes, they will. Okay, so there's no deficiencies, in, in your opinion, as to any of the traffic uh, design that's proposed? Correct. Okay. I do have a, another question. What about other types of traffic that normally aren't addressed in traffic studies? Amish, buggies, uh, tractors, stuff like that. Did you guys look at any of those items? I didn't see it in your report here. No, it's typically the adequate public facilities law has us look at vehicles only. What about, did you guys look at or consider a widening of any portion of that road, not on Route 5, but on any of these four uh, roads that are being shown in your presentation right now? Widening of any other roads besides Oaks? Well, those roads that you've got shown on your presentation right now, did you look at um, possibly widening of those? We have not, no. All right. But Oaks, is Oaks being widened as part of the, the additional lanes there, so one of the four showing? Yes, off of this plan to the right, yes. Yeah, widening. that's off to the right, though. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, and again, this intersection meets the capacity test for, for adequacy. Okay. What time of day was the study done? The study and again. What, what time of the year? What time That's, of year? Yeah, what day? What time of day and what time of the year? So, our traffic counts were done in December of 2020. Now, understanding that, you know, um, there were some COVID issues going on, yeah. so 
what we did, we went back and compared our counts to older counts that were done at the intersection of Five and Mount Wolf and Oaks Road. So we ended up actually using an older count from 2018 and adding a growth factor to get it to the current year. Um, that actually showed higher volume than our count mm -hmm. um, in 2020 because of COVID issues. Um, those counts actually, the 2020 counts were, were down about 16% in the morning, about 13% in the evening peak. <coughs> So the counts, um, those counts were updated, but the five at Mount Wolf, we used an older count and added growth factors. And what was your growth factor? What percentage? Um, that area was shown to grow. And we, how we determine growth factors is based on um, state data. So the state data showed a 0.4% per year growth. So we used 0.4% per year and added to the 2018 count. Okay. And those numbers would drive, if you factored all that together, those numbers would drive the county to, uh, that's the information the county uses to put things like lights at the crossings and things like that. Or is it strictly the usage of that inner that crossing right there was which number drives the use of lights there for the trail crossing yes that would be the use of the trail itself so the bikes the pedestrians um, that use the trail and would that require a different count or a different study it would and that's mm -hmm. something y'all haven't been commissioned to look at is it correct okay Any other questions? Hmm. Please continue. No. Th those are uh, our witnesses tonight to present the site plan. We're available for any other questions. I think you have uh, another witness. Yeah, Nelson, come on up. Yeah, I, I just wanted to um, uh, add one thing. I think. Uh, Pull the microphone closer. Jackie, if I remember. So, okay, here we go. Um, the stop bars were added for, I think, their existing stop signs. So, on. on um, uh, Charlotte Hall Road there where the cursor is right now there's a stop sign uh, there is one on uh, Oaks Road I, um, I'm, I know that for certain because we surveyed that one we picked that one up so I think it's it's already signed I think Jackie we put the bars to enhance the signage that exists so that's all I want to say thank you that's correct Nelson mm -hmm. so, so oh sorry. I don't have any data. That may be a question for Mr. Gotch. I'm not sure that the, if the county tracks that. If you would state your name for the record. Uh, Jim Gotch, Director of Public Works. And if you've raised your right hand, do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Please proceed. <clears throat> so the Three Notch Trail is actually not a public. Use the mic. You got it. Okay. You got to like you're singing karaoke. <laughs> All right, the three, three Notch Trail is actually not a public works project. It's a recreation and parks funded project. And uh, so we don't, we didn't install it. We don't maintain it. We, uh, uh, I don't have any data on the usage of it. Okay. Thank you. How about for traffic and stuff in the area? And calculating the growth given the size of the trail and the number of people that live there, could you make an estimate based on your knowledge and experience as to how often that trail is used? Oh, I'm, I'm assuming it's used all the time because uh, uh, I haven't walked on this section. I just walk on the section further south than here. And uh, whenever you're out, you see people go in both directions. So it is used. All right. 
and my whole thing with that is I use the one that's lower down and they have done lights and everything at one of the crossings and we've still almost been hit just due to uh, traffic increase in that area. So that's why I'm very concerned and poking at trail usage. And, and the county has a budget for adding lights at these trail crossings. What we're working on right now uh, with recreation and parks, some of the signals, uh, the, I'm, I'm not the electrical guy, but the, the computer panel inside the box on some of the older crossings has failed. So what we're doing is we have a consultant that this is actually a public works thing, that we have a consultant who's looking at the the different signal boxes, amazingly, they're not all the same. So they were built by developers as they were, you know, as, as developments went in, and they don't all match. But when we get done, all the signals will match. So if there's a signal that needs to go in here, a signal will get added and it will match all the other ones. So it, it, it used to have a uh, motion detector when you, when you get close to the intersection just passing by a sensor would set off the trail and it would start blinking so the cars would know that somebody was coming. <coughs> right now, a lot of them are set so they blink continuously because the motion detectors, that's what's the broken part on the, on the equipment. And so what we're doing is uh, because that, that's not reliable, we're going back to the push button when you get close, like you would see at a normal uh, traffic intersection. Okay. So with Public Works, are you guys involved, or is this traffic department, are you guys involved? And for the folks out there, y'all will have your chance. Hold on. Are you guys involved when they're talking about widening of the roads? Is Are you guys involved in any of those decisions? For the county roads, correct. Okay. So they are offering to widen roads that don't directly affect their business. Is this something that you see businesses normally do when they're talking new construction projects? Uh, this is, a, this is a tricky one because a lot of times you don't want to do an improvement that helps your competitor, but that's exactly what they're doing. So on the state highway where they're lengthening the turn lane, if you're coming south out of Waldorf, I, I used to commute down out of Waldorf for a while, um, sometimes the left lane would back up and you have to jump because the cars to turn left at that intersection would actually fill up the left turn lane and go in, spill into the left through lane. Mm -hmm. So them linking the, that road actually improves the condition on the state highway. Even though it doesn't help their business, it helps people turning onto Mount Wolf Road instead, instead of Oaks Road. So on their side, they're doing the improvements for adding the auxiliary, you know, the right turn lane into the site and then continuing it down to Oaks Road. Uh, and then when it comes around the corner, that intersection is getting widened, which will actually help the function of the county road, Oaks Road. So instead of having the queue for the traffic back up further toward the intersection with Charlotte Hall Road, it's gonna pull that, uh, the, the queue length, the, the people stop waiting for the signal, it will shorten that distance. So yes, that helps the county road. So what they're basically doing is helping out everybody by trying to widen the roads, even if it's going to hurt their business a little bit by allowing Wawa to pick up more customers turning left they're still offering to widen all these roads they're not right. being required to widen these roads well they're they're uh, they're doing uh their improvements not only to meet the level of service requirements that they have to do uh, but they're also looking at operational conditions of the intersection so you've got the safety issues and you've got the operation does it function well for the improvements or getting in, in and out of their entrance. So now that they're, they're doing. doing that, that's going to increase traffic on the county roads, which are now fall under your purview. What plans for this area do you have to help alleviate the new traffic flow coming into the county roads? Okay, so uh, the intersection, this side of the this side of uh, Route Five. We don't have plans for doing anything on Charlotte Hall Road or Oaks Road. When you go across the street, 
on Mount Wolf Road and it hits Triangle Drive, the Wawa entrance. And, and uh, that's, a, that's a bad, that's becoming a very bad intersection. So the county has plans for a roundabout at that intersection. So you'll drive down uh, Mount Wolf Road, go around a roundabout and keep going straight. Or if you're coming up Triangle, you'll use the same roundabout and can get into the Wawa entrance off the roundabout. And then there's another roundabout that's being proposed at the other end where it hits Golden Beach Road as well. Okay. And, and all this is, uh, is funding related. The, the roundabout at uh, Mount Wolf Road is funded. It's, it's closer to being constructed. It's under engineering design. Okay. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> All right. Thank you. No more questions. Thank you, Jim. <clears throat> so, Mr. Chairman, that's our presentation. We would uh, generally at a uh, concept site plan hearing. I think we've done it at this board. I can present the standards and address any comments of the, of the citizens when we do our rebuttal uh, after public comment later. Okay. A um, couple of quick questions, and I think it's over your, your uh, presentation. The APF that was submitted, again, obviously has been going through the TEC process and has been reviewed by both State Highway and Public Works. It has been, and those comments are on board docs uh, attached to the uh, staff report, the updated staff report that's part of the record. And the approval of the APF plan is sits with the Director of Land Use and Growth Management. Uh, that's correct. What we need to show tonight is that this may meet the requirements of adequate public facilities, including for traffic. Mr. Hunt, as the Planning Director, reaches that final decision that it does indeed meet that once all the final engineering on the project is done. It, and my understanding is he consults and takes the comments from both State Highway Administration and DPW when those roads are involved. So he'll consult with those agencies, make sure they sign off on the final design, and only then uh, is it approvable by the Planning Director. So if the Board of Appeals feels to Tonight that you may be able to meet all of the adequate public facilities requirements and then the planning and zoning director then does not approve it because of planning uh, because of adequate facilities requirements you have the option or your client has the option then to bring it back to the Board of Appeals for reconsideration we could the, the zoning ordinance in Maryland law generally allows an applicant to appeal a final decision of of a decision maker within the county like Mr. Hunt at that, at that time. So if we were, were not happy with this decision, we would have that right. Okay. Any other question? You're still up? Uh, I'll sit down, let the, the what, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, and I don't know if you heard me as uh, we were transitioning, um, traditionally after the public speaks, we, we're given the opportunity to respond to any concerns that are raised, and I can summarize the five standards then um, in our rebuttal and closing argument. And, and we will do it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, the board will now open the hearing for public testimony. We ask that each speaker, as you come up, please state your name and address for the record, and then I will give you the oath. You will then have three minutes in order to make your statement or to make any comments or any questions you may have. Uh, before we start, the last, uh, the last I have seen um, in board documents is that we have received six uh, comments that have been mailed in, emailed in. Two of those, again, have supported the project because of the E85 uh, gas provisions. So with that, again, I will open it up for public testimony. Raise your hand and I'll call on you. Do we have a list? I'm sorry, we do have a list. I'm so, thank you. <laughs> um, we have Ann Gregory from Charlotte Hall. Hi. Would you state your name for record and where you live? Um, I'm Ann Gregory. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm at 30055 Charlotte Hall Road. Uh, would you raise your right hand? 
Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Go ahead. I have a lot of questions. First of all, I don't know where to start. Um, I know that trail. I, in the past three years, averaged 2,000 miles a year on that trail. Um, there's a lot of problems too. It's neglected and it needs some work and it's got lots of cracks in it. Um, that crossover they're talking about there, first of all, most people that ride the trail, they get on it at the senior center and they go south down to Baggett Park. Some will come up, but not too many people go past Oaks Road. When I get on the trail, I live on Charlotte Hall Road, so I, I have to take Charlotte Hall Road down to the Lions private driveway and go in to where the two mile marker is at. I almost never, unless someone wants me to go with them, go down to the, in the other direction. That intersection there at Oaks Road, that is a nightmare. Has been for a long time. Cars don't stop and you got four cars that you're gonna be watching for just to get across that thing. And as far as they're given the, some type of an access across to the trail to benefit the trail, honey, it ain't gonna benefit the trail, it's gonna benefit them. But anyway. I doubt that there would be many people using that trail that would want to go over to Royal Farms. I'd be surprised. Um, when you're coming down Route 5, there at Oaks Road and Mount Wolf, and you're making the right to come in there at Wentworth, that's a big hole drops down in there. I'm wondering how they're going to work that traffic lane to get in there. Um, in the evenings when traffic is heavy, uh, people that are going to Golden Beach, if they stay on Route 5 to turn left to go to Golden Beach, they might have to go through three lights. So they're turning there at Wentworth, the old Wentworth, and they're coming down Charlotte Hall Road and they're turning on Golden Beach Road. So there's a lot of traffic around through there already. Um, the Frito-Lay, the veterans home, the tractor trailers, lots of traffic. Um, as far as those lights they were talking about on the different roads, most of them are not. Uh, Baptist Church Road, that thing most of the time don't work anyway. They just put one on Route 6 and you've got to stop and punch the the thing several times, and there's been quite a few accidents there. There was one a while back on um, down near Pat Baggett Park where a guy got hit, uh, where they had the med vac him out. But um, the one on Route 6, if there's traffic coming and someone stops, if there's any traffic coming behind them, you better not go because they will pass them. One more minute, please. One more minute, please. Oh, okay. Well, there's there's a, a new veterans outpatient facility um, on Route 5. Uh, I understand there's gonna be a gas station going in there. Has, has anybody looked at all of that whole area when you mentioned about how many gas stations we got down there? Um, oh. I'd like to have seen that map a whole lot closer to understand more about what's going on there. It's hard to see from back, back there, but um, the, I, I'm concerned about there being water problems there at that, for the projecting to put that Royal Farms because when there's a lot of rain, water just sets there anyway. Uh, Wentworth had lots of trees and lots okay. of plants that soak up a lot of water. Now that's all gone. They're gonna have buildings and a lot of asphalt. Where's that okay. water going? Ms. Gregory, let me, let me cut you off right there. Right. And um, we'll, we'll have other people give testimony. And if you still like to make comments afterwards after they're finished, then you can come one back up. Okay, I okay. just have lots of doubts about that. It seems very uh, inappropriate for that piece of property. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. And the next one on the list I have is Wendy Smith. <laughs> Did 
Could you break that? <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm Wendy Smith. I live on the corner of Oaks Road. Uh, this is my second time living there. Um, when the market crashed, mm -hmm. we sold it. Sworn in. We bought it back. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, and again, as, as a, to go back, if you would raise your right hand. Oh, sorry. Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury and that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so when the market crashed, we sold that house and we left and we came back. And just in that short time frame, there has been a huge difference in the traffic and, it, and the trail. <laughs> um, I've seen three people get hit on that trail, three at that same intersection. Um, the traffic simulation that, that they did is not accurate. And I will offer this to you too. Any of you that want to come and sit on my front porch and watch the traffic, you're more than welcome. Their simulation said that there was six cars that went through my house during rush hour between seven o'clock and 11 a.m. because I'm up putting my kids on the bus. There was 36 cars, 36. So there's six to 36 is not accurate. And furthermore, I've called the county several, several, several times about putting speed bumps, about putting ripple strips. I see probably six to eight people run those stop signs every day, every day. I have videos of it on my phone, every day. There is a huge, huge safety issue. Not to mention, not to mention, where are all our cops at? And what about, what about the EMS? Where are they at? Most of them are in the county, down in the county. We need more cops and we need more EMS because there's not enough. The other day, I can't remember when it was, the exact date, there was a drunk man on the trail. He sat on the corner of that trail for probably a good 15 to 20 minutes waiting for the cops. And you know who came first? Charles County. So um, they can say what they want for their simulations and all that stuff. I don't believe it. I live there, and um, I don't even let my 14-year-old go get my mail from the mailbox. He's 14, and I don't let him get my mail from the mailbox. So um, those are the, my major issues. My other major issue is, I've, this is the second time I've lived there, like I said. Wentworth has always been my neighbor. I never, it wasn't a 24-hour facility. There was a sound barrier there, not to mention not quite sure how this happens, but there was a house there. Then there was also a tree barrier on the other side of that house that followed Old Charlotte Hall down the road. So where's that sound barrier gonna come from for me now? Because it's all gonna be wide open. Not to mention, I'm not gonna have any privacy in my backyard. So everybody's gonna be able to see what's going on. So. Um, those are my complaints. And as far as the E85, all you gotta do is take that petition to the racetrack and that's, that's a done deal. So okay. you can't, uh, us local people who live there can't compete with that. Not to mention, you're bringing all of that E85 in here. Is that gonna bring more racers? That, thank you very know. much. And again, as I said before, if there's any time after the presentations, we'll call you back. Um, Richard Wright. Would you state your name and address for the record? My name is Richard Wright, 37450 Handle Drive. And I would you raise your right hand? Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. You may proceed. Thank you, sir. Did, I'm sorry. No, I was just gonna say, speak into the microphone. Okay, I have um, a few comments to make. Um, uh, first of all, I think it was brought up earlier that there are 
four gas stations within the first half mile of coming into Charlotte Hall. I don't think that we need another gas station to put three gas stations on one corner. There's already a Shell station and a Wawa that are on opposing corners. Having one more is probably going to ruin the business of the Shell station, which is typically the smallest right now. Um, the um, uh, Mr. Bradley brought up earlier the traffic study with regard to Amish. We are an Amish community. We have a lot of Amish buggies and people that are non-motorized coming through that intersection going to Food Lion or coming and going over to McKay's for shopping purposes. Uh, a number of years ago, there was a terrible accident there where someone um, actually hit an Amish buggy and killed a child. And that's a dangerous intersection. And if that's one of the intersections that the Amish use to get to the food services and adding more traffic to there is gonna be dangerous, not only for them, but for the remainder of us in the community. Um, it was also stated earlier that the target customer is not those who live in the community. It is those who are transmitting or uh, going through the environment or going through the, uh, the area. Um, I avidly use the, the trail. Like I said, I live right off of Oaks in Melody Acres, the first neighborhood on the left, just you know, very short from where that intersection is. And I do go the entire trail. I go from one end all the way to the other. And I have almost been hit at that intersection many times. The, the, the problem with that intersection, you know, there's many problems, but the stop sign is before the trail, which causes tremendous confusion for everybody else and the other three uh, travel lanes. So, People are always running that stop sign because they're not aware, because they're not at the intersection. I think adding two stop signs is going to make even more confusion, and it's going to make that intersection even more dangerous and a lot more traffic going through there. And that trail does uh, support runners, walkers, moms with kids, um, and people from the veterans' home. I've seen people in the, in, the, in the wheels going all the way up and down, and having that much more traffic in that area is going to be extremely dangerous for people who are not very mobile, who can't move very quickly. Um, and, I, and one last statement I wanted to make was, um, it was stated earlier that the intersection or the area at Triangle Drive in front of the Wawa and over by the tractor supply is a terrible, very bad intersection. It looks like all we're trying to do with this development is move that same intersection complexity and, ch and challenges to the other side of the road and affecting another community. So I am against the uh, approval of the development of this property for the for the stated purposes. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Comments. Um, next on the list, I have Shark Cow. Right. Good evening. My name is Carol Wright. My uh, address is three seven four five zero Handle Drive, Charlotte Hall. Thank you. And if you'd raise your right hand. Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Um, I also live in Melody Acres. I'm Richard's wife. Um, we've been there for 28 years. Um, to say that our area, our town, has changed dramatically is an understatement in the last just five years even. The traffic is absolutely insane. We've had many horrific accidents just in this past year, maybe two years. Um, my main concern, besides all the other ones that have been brought up, is, is very much that intersection on Charlotte Hall Road and Oaks. Um, we do have stop signs there. People do not know how to use a four-way stop. They don't care. Uh, they go when they feel like it. Whoever got there first, they don't follow the actual rules of the road. Um, also, they don't stop, they just run it. If they think nobody's looking or nobody's there, they run it. And we do have a perfect place for cops to sit there and you know, give tickets at, at the hair salon that's right there, which will probably be gone pretty soon too because of this development if it goes through. Um, also, another problem I haven't heard brought up is we do have two stop signs on either side of the trail for the cyclists. They don't stop either sometimes, they just go. Um, I've almost hit people, we're trying to communicate, they don't look. Um, it's very dangerous here, in especially this area. Uh, Wentworth was a great welcome to the, to the county and 
it was a nice, you know, visual to come into the county. I, we like our local businesses. We want to support local businesses. Um, we don't want a 24 hour lit up, noisy uh, business here. It's This is not a cute area to live in anymore. It used to be uh, a little joke that St. Mary's uh, rolled up the sidewalks at 630 and it's not that anymore. And I understand that you want a town center, but I don't feel that this is a good fit for that property. Move it to somewhere that has more uh, road to get in and get out in an easier fashion. Um, and that's that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I got Rose Mary Sheets. Yeah, um, I will pass because these two people here have touched on that I thank, thank, you. thank you. Let me go down the list. Uh, Sandra Adelin. <coughs> I'm sorry, did I pronounce that right? I'm sure. Um, would you raise your right hand? Yes, ma'am. And again, state your name and address for the record. My name is Sandra Edelin, and Edelin. I live at 30250 Memory Hill Lane in Charlotte Hall, Maryland. Okay. And would you remain standing and raise your right hand? Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. You may proceed. Okay. I'm just going to sit here. I feel like this. I have better. Um, first off, I just I wanted to address, um, I noticed that E85 is a big, big thing. I think a lot of people, um, and they gave the 750 addresses. I want to say, first off, um, again, that, that they cannot possibly be from our area. Um, I do, in fact, have addresses, names from people who actually live here in Charlotte Hall that are opposed to this plan as I am. Um, I can give that to you. This is actually local addresses. Also, um, I'll give it, I'll kind of set it here. You want it now? Yeah, just okay, I'll, just it, I'll give it to you in just a second. How many signatures are on there, excuse me? I'm sorry, say that again? Signatures were on there? I have, there's 25. They're just local right here in Charlotte Hall right, that would be affected by this particular plan. Thank you. Um, also, I, I just want to say I, I've been here at all of these meetings um, from from day one, um, from every change, everything that that um, Mr. Orocho as well as Nelson have they've all have said. But I I know that the synchro that has been done as far as traffic, because traffic is obviously the main issue here for all of us residents who live there, and the video, the synchro that they did shows queuing from Route 5 all the way to McKay's, and that's obviously an issue. Um, I, I do see that they're talking about putting in that extra lane for the Wawa and stuff. It's not necessarily for this particular plan. It's because that's what's needed for this this failing intersection. There's so many accidents, um, as as they have just said on the other side, where Mount Wolf is and where the Wawa is. I mean, it is like Frogger trying to get across there. I mean, you just literally want to say a prayer and hope for the best because it's that dangerous. And again, like the gentleman said, that's what we'd be bringing to on our side of the road. Um, so that is certainly an issue. Also, I want to bring out that not only did they purchase the Wentworth property, they also purchased the residential home and behind that, which is the little white house that you may see on the video. And the reason for that is, is because what they're trying to put there does not fit. Um, also, I know that where they were, they wanted to have them in one of the meetings um, cut into the proposed plan to put a turn, to come into there to widen that, and they couldn't. And the reason being is because that's where the septic lines were going to go. They run right along where the entrance is now, all the way back to that second piece of property parcel that they purchased is where the septic lines are going to go. The health department, they all know it does not fit. This plan that and what they want to put there does not fit. 
So my thing is, everyone knows that it, it doesn't work there. Like again, yes, we can beat it to death. We don't need another one. But what the proposed plan is gonna cause for us residents living there, trying to get out of our driveways, the amount of traffic that's on Oaks Road and Charlotte Hall Road, we all know they're saying that everyone's gonna take that right in and right out. No, they're not. That's not safe. And anyone who has a brain is gonna wanna come out onto Oaks Road or Old Charlotte Hall Road because that's what's gonna be safe. To come out and so right so we're gonna be jammed up with traffic at that four-way that they're talking at, you know, people coming on Old Charlotte Hall Road and Oaks Road, and that's what we're gonna be having. And you're talking about tractor trailers. Right now, as it sits from Route 5 to the four-way, we have 500 feet. That's what we figured out at the last meeting. You have 500 feet. Now you want you have a shell station. If I'm in my dually truck in a Prius behind me. I'm already, my rear end, we're already into the entrance of the Shell station right now. Now you want to add another gas station and it's, it's just not, it's not going to work because people are not going to try to get out onto Route 5 doing 65 miles an hour. You got the buggies, you got the Amish, you got the Mennonite, all those things need to be taken into consideration. And us as residents and citizens who live there are coming to you as a safety feature. You know, we, we rely on on all of you guys to make decisions for our safety. I mean, I know a lot of people are saying, yeah, they got money involved. They do, but what, what about us citizens? I may not have $2 million or whatever that these people have, but I have I have built a life there. This is my family, that we live there, and, and this property and what you're gonna put there is gonna affect me on the daily, getting out of my driveway. And all these other people, I, I represent the people here behind us that may not wanna speak tonight, they've lived there for 30 30 some, 40 some years, 45 years they've lived there. So all of us, it's, it's just gonna be an absolute nightmare. And also, we talk about the noise and the lighting. That's, I mean, how much lighting, we talk about downward lights. I mean, that, I have pictures that I've actually taken that I also have where there's actual, you said there's no, they don't idle trucks. Well, there you go. I've never been by a Royal Farms and not seen trucks at idle at nighttime. And that's what we're gonna be listening to, these trucks at idle in my backyard. And now you wanna sell E85. So let's bring in the race cars and the tractors and, the tr and these trucks and cars coming in there that wanna go to the track. That's what we're gonna be dealing with. Um, your time's up. Um, okay. Again, as I said earlier, if we go through everybody and you want to repeat, okay, we'll, we'll bring you back up. Okay. I, can I go ahead and give this to you then? Sure. Okay. Sure. Well, thank you. I appreciate your time. Um, Dale Ans Anson. Do, do you need Steve that, Steve? Do I need to? No, I don't need do to see that. Uh, okay. Just give it to the clerk, please. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Would you state name your name Bill and address? Antosh. Would you state your name and address for the record? 29754 Beach Court, <coughs> Mechanicsville, Maryland. Okay, would you raise your right hand? Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do, yes. Please proceed. I also have been to all of the, you'll hear my big mouth, by the way, uh, I've also been to all of the hearings. I just wanted to make some observations. First of all, one of the things that the first hearing, they sent it back because of traffic, because they were worried about the additional traffic. I have never once seen a gas station create traffic. The people coming down and going back that road is gonna remain a constant. Is it bad? Yes. Is it gonna increase? Yes, but not because of Royal Farms. People going up and down that road is gonna remain a constant. So all of these, it's gonna make more traffic, it's gonna this, and it's not gonna happen. Think about it. The people that go down that road are going to Pax River, or down that way to Lexington Park, or down that way to California or Hollywood to get a job, or, or to go to their job. If they're coming by in the morning, they're gonna pull in Royal Farms, they're gonna go right back out on the road and go to where they're going. On the way back home, it might be more convenient to go to Wawa. If Wawa had a real big problem, wouldn't they have been to one of the hearings? They don't have a problem with it. It's good competition. Another observation. 
One guy said, we need sidewalks. That's absurd. I left Golden Beach. You know how many sidewalks I've seen between here and Golden Beach that are on Route 5? Zero. You do not need a sidewalk on Route 5. Nobody walks up and down Route 5. Anyway, just an observation. Probably a good idea to have it on Oaks Road and going over to the uh, trail. Makes sense. But out on Route 5? I don't think so. If you really wanted to do a traffic study, and I know people kind of alluded to other places, this is about Royal Farms, but real quickly, if you want to do a traffic study, do it from the farmer's market up to Golden Beach Road. That's where we've had a ton of accidents. And why? Because they go down the shoulder. There's no barricades anywhere. Like if you think you're going into the DQ or into the uh, uh, whatever the other ones there, the uh, Dairy Queen and all, I mean, Dairy Queen and the uh, um, hamburger places, uh, McDonald's, you think they're going there, but they go all the way down to Golden Beach Road. And that's where the guy T-boned and killed two people this year. That would be a good place for a traffic study. How come the Royal Farms in Lexington Park, bam, right through, first try? How come the Chipotle just down the street where they're tearing down the motel, that went right through the first try? What is it about this one? It's not the additional traffic. We just talked about that. Everybody says, we need a nice restaurant there. You can't have a nice restaurant there. If anybody knows and did their homework, there's not enough uh, water and sewer. There's water now with the new water tower. There's no sewer. And until a big, huge plant gets in there, a water treatment plant, it's not going to happen. Finally, this is the gateway to our wonderful county. What do we want there? Oh, it'd be nice to have nice little mom and pop shops, wouldn't it? It's not going to happen. No little mom and pop shop is going to go in there and build what they need. They can't afford to do it unless some developer comes along and puts in nice shops and mom and pops rents them. It's not going to happen. So how about we have a wonderful company like Royal Farms that are a class act, do a great job, good competition, doesn't increase traffic, Sounds like a good idea to me. No one else is knocking down the doors trying to get this uh, property. Last observation, real quick. I think I have a couple more seconds. When they talked about the traffic and they were going to add more lanes, I haven't figured out yet why they want the lanes going back towards Waldorf. Think about it. Anybody that's coming into the Royal Farms, they're going to get their gas, get their coffee, get their chicken. I did say chicken, didn't I? They're going to go about on Mount Wolf. They want to turn right and go back down south, not back north to Waldorf. Nobody's coming there just to get gas and go back to Waldorf. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, very much. I th and thank you for your comments about the traffic. Uh, who? Any, any other? Thank you for your comments about the traffic oh, okay. or lack of increased traffic. Thank you. Cecilia Owens. Would you again state your name for the record and your address? Good evening. My name is Cecilia Owens. I live at 30189 Charlotte Hall Road. And if you would please raise your right hand. Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. You may proceed. I am a bus driver for St. Mary's County Schools. And if you could put up that picture with all the blue markings that she had, the last one. Give me just a moment. I drive a school bus. A school bus is 40 feet long. And I also live along Charlotte Hall Trail, or Three Notch Trail. Um, I'll touch base on the trail first. The trail goes straight through my driveway. Um, 
I can attest to the traffic of the trail. Uh, there's probably, mm, probably an average between 40 and 60 people that come through my driveway every day. Wave to them. It literally, my driveway is an access for EMS and police if they have to get some to, to someone on the trail. The county roads goes through my driveway when they have to access it for lawn cutting. Um, we have five acres that our driveway goes from Charlotte Hall Road to Gershwin, and uh, my family gave access to the county at the end of our driveway for the neighborhood for Melody Acres to have access to the trail so people wouldn't go through our yard. Um, there are people that drive their vehicles on the trail because they mix it up with a roadway. When people go through the intersection, um, they do not stop at stop signs. They will turn left onto the trail. They go between the trees. They don't pay attention to the barriers that are there. They'll go through the trees that are there because it's not blocking, so you can get through the trees there. They drive down the trail with their vehicles until they get to our driveway, and they're like, oh, this is not where we're supposed to be because they come across either a walker, a biker, or someone pushing a buggy, you know, a baby stroller, something like that, and then they'll turn down our driveway, which at the end of both of our driveways, we have no public access. Private driveway does not do any good. They will come up our driveway and go either direction on the trail and drive all the way down to the veteran's home does not make a difference. If you look at the intersection, when you come through the crosswalk of the intersection, the first house on the right, the address is 37550 Oaks Road. That is a designated bus stop. There are middle school kids there that get off. When a bus driver does a bus stop there, the bus stops for approximately two to three minutes to drop off that student. There's also a driveway across the street. When a bus is sitting there, traffic has to stop. If there's a vehicle or vehicles during rush hour traffic sitting across the road on Oaks, all that traffic backs up to the entrance of Royal Farms. Where do you think the traffic is coming from off of Route 5? It's not moving. Neither is the traffic on Oaks Road going out to Route 5. When you come out of Oaks Road going towards Charlotte Hall Road, towards Route 5, it is the same way. The county has us doing same side stops. Those kids are not allowed to cross that road as it is. We have to do same side stops because of the safety of those kids. I have come up to that crosswalk many of times in my bus where the, the people on the trail do not stop. I have to do a double stop to make sure that they stop or I let them cross before I can make the right hand turn onto Charlotte Hall Road to continue my run because people don't stop at the stop sign coming from Lighthouse Liquor's End. Now, people coming south on Route 5, they hit Charlotte Hall Road up there at Lighthouse Liquors. They come down and they do not stop at that stop sign because they want to beat the light on Route 5 at the Wawa at Golden Beach Road. And they want to fly all the way down Charlotte Hall Road to get to Route 6 so they don't have to stop at those traffic lights. It is a very dangerous intersection without the Royal Farms there and something needs to be done with it already. I have almost hit two people on bikes because they don't stop. It's very scary, especially when you have a bus load of kids. Um, I have seen several accidents at that intersection with kids on my bus, especially elementary kids, and they're like, is that my mom? Is that my dad? That's our car. No, it's not. Your parents are okay. Look, that's yeah, not them. One more minute, please. So it's, it's not a good intersection to begin with. And I think if the Royal Farms does go in there, it's going to be a bigger problem because it's just going to be crowded. They're going to come out on that back road and they're going to fly down Charlotte Hall instead of going out onto Route 5. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any questions? No. 
Um, that's the name, that's the list of names that I have. Is there anybody else who hasn't spoken that would like to? Come on up, please. If you'd state your name and address for the record. My name is, can you hear me? Tom Brown, uh, 30405, South Roses Iowa Way, Charlotte Hall, Maryland. And if you'd raise your right hand. Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Please proceed. All right. So I live on Mount Wolf Road, have for over 40 years, and the main thing I see as a benefit with the Royal Farm coming in is that it can alleviate some of the traffic that's turning from southbound on a Mount Wolf Road that is a risk of all these accidents, um, keeping my kid's life you know, a little safer. Uh, the only other thing I want to talk about is the E85, which I didn't think was going to be that big of a deal. Um, I think it's kind of misconstrued that's race car fuel. Uh, a lot of street cars have it. My car has it out there. Cars you can get from the factory, dealership, trucks, things like that. Um, come with the 85 or flex fuel option. Um, there's only one other station in St. Mary's. That's the Harris Teeter in California that has it that just opened. The Harris Teeter in Dunkirk and the MGM Royal Farms. So anyway, that's all I have. Thank you. Anybody else that hasn't spoken would like to speak? Come on up, please. Ah, you gonna redo? I wanted to add something if I could. Um, I meant to say also with the traffic, there's a funeral home there on the backside of uh, Three Notch that gets used in the funeral processions. They actually come out on Oaks Road. Um, and I've seen that cause some serious traffic uh, also. And something else I didn't mention is that this is a 24 hour establishment and the fact that um, the crime that comes with that being open 24 hours. Um, just um, Monday, I was picking up a piece of jewelry there at the uh, TC Martin little jewelry place there on the corner, and the window was shattered out of that at 3 a.m. in the morning. So there is crime that happens, and and when the bars let out there, and that's what's open at 24-hour establishment is certainly not what us residents want to have to deal with because that is going to bring more crime to our area. So I just wanted to also touch on that because I know traffic traffic certainly is a thing but I, I, I just want to say too I'm 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 not opposed to Starbucks I'm not opposed to Royal Farms it is where they are trying to put it you know I'm like I said I'm a small town girl I, I get all of that but it's it's where they wish to put it that's going to be a problem and I think a lot of people are talking about the the Starbucks I mean the Royal Farms but also to the Starbucks if anyone has ever been across the street at the um, dump it that's I mean we know what a nightmare that is trying to get through that parking lot so you want to add a Starbucks alongside of Royal Farms there on our side of the road also so we're gonna have to deal with that and that is that alone is going to be a nightmare so again I, all I'm saying is for you guys is to think of our safety as residents here that travel that road, and I myself do um, as a business owner here in the county. And we're looking upon you guys to make the right decision for our safety, and we don't want it here because it is certainly going to cause nothing but more congestion to an already failing intersection. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Um, and Gregory, would you like to come back up? Uh, just a couple comments. Um, I just wondered if maybe you have looked at what's already on that road when she brought up the junkyard, which I, I mean, not the junkyard, but the funeral home plus the junkyard, which I meant to bring up myself. When you got that junkyard with big tractor trailers coming out of there filled with junk cars, um, if there's a problem on Route 5, accident or whatever, all that traffic comes down Charlotte Hall Road because it picks up at Lighthouse Liquor and it goes all the way to Route 6. So they get to miss a whole lot of lights by coming down that road. I've been in my house 47 years. My house was built in 1935. Uh, when I go out to cut my grass on the front of the road, I take my life in my hands because they don't slow down, even though they may see you. Um, so if you've got You've got a bank out there, you've got the funeral home, and by the way, the funeral home, I believe they had four or five viewing rooms and they had to get some exemptions because they had to put in that big stormwater pond and they didn't have enough parking. And they said, oh, we'll never use all of those. 
uh, so they got approved for it, but yet they do have cars parked out on that road when they have a big funeral. They've done that many times. They're not supposed to be doing that. I'd love to see the cops go down and ticket the owner of the funeral home, not the people that are attending the funeral. Um, in front of me, there's 13 acres. McKay's was supposed to go in there with other stores. There's several entrances going into that project off of Charlotte Hall Road. What are you gonna do to us? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. You got to look at it. You got to ride down there and you got to take a look. One other thing, it's kind of a silly question, but wasn't there a Maryland state law that has something to do with five cent gas hikes? If you're within a certain mile radius of a gas station, you can't lower your prices more than five cents. Is that law still in effect? I was just curious how, how that affects all of the other gas stations and something was brought up about gas prices. And there again, uh, to remind you to look at the veterans VA, the $5 million new VA outpatient facility. I understand there's gas station going in there too. So Good. all that needs to be really looked at. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Anybody else? <clears throat> One more. Mr. Richard Wright? That's correct, yes. Um, just after listening to some of the other testimony, I just want to make a few comments. Um, there, the, the gentleman said that having a Royal Farms is not going to add traffic. It's not going to add traffic to Route 5, but it is going to add traffic to Charlotte Hall Road and to Oaks Road. That's where our concern is because that is our, that's where our residence is. Route 5 is Route 5 and we understand that. And then the other thing was those other places that got approval, they're not right next to residences. They're already in established locations where the, um, you know, the, the motel was, there's not a house right next door that's being impact, impacted by, you know, uh, a restaurant going into that parking lot because it's already an established parking lot. This location directly impacts everybody who lives down and travels down Oaks Road, which has been increasing. There's a new neighborhood, you know, going up down or right at the corner of Oaks Road before it turns left. There's a brand new neighborhood there. There's a lot of houses. The traffic, like my wife said earlier, um, coming up Oaks Road has increased tremendously over the past few years. Um, so the, the concern is not for traffic on Route 5, that Royal Farms is gonna be bringing in people to come buy chicken and leave. It's gonna be when they feed out because the only access they're gonna have to get back onto a major road is coming on a secondary road and it's gonna block those roads up. That's my concern. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? That's the case, I will hold, close the uh, public hearing portion of the meeting and I'll ask Mr. Longmore if he comes up, if he wants to make some closing statements. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Is there anyone online? No, no phones. No phones, no phones. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, um, I'll do my best to address some of the concerns that came up and um, both from the public and from the board members during our presentation. Um, I guess to begin with, um, I'll share with you, and you can, if you've looked at the Planning Commission video, uh, the crosswalk and the, and the idea of flashing lights there, I don't believe came up at the Planning Commission. I know we've discussed it tonight. Um, I spoke to my client just before the public spoke. Uh, they're willing to put uh, flashing lights there uh, if it's approvable by the Department of Racks and, and pay for the cost of doing that. So if that is a condition that the board wants to put on there uh, because of the concerns raised by the citizens tonight, they're willing to do that um, as well. Um, what I'd like to do is go through the, the five standards that I mentioned at the beginning of the hearing and I'll try to address some of the concerns uh, that were raised by the public then um, so that I can be briefer than trying to do it in, in two parts. Um, again, there's five standards we need to meet in order to be approved for a concept site plan. The first is that it's consistent with a comprehensive plan and applicable functional plans. Um, as shared in the staff report, these uses are fully permitted uses within the zone. This is a town center. Um, it's where our comprehensive plan um, specifically states it wants to concentrate new growth. 
Um, it is in the only other areas that um, are more dense are the development districts. Section 3.6 of the comprehensive plan refers to town centers. And I think this, was, this quote was in the staff report. They are urban and pattern and form designed for moderately intense residential, commercial, and industrial development uh, supported by the provision of community facilities and services. Um, it's also defined as a growth area in 4.1 of the comprehensive plan. Um, there were some comments by some of the, the citizens that spoke today um, that the, pro the uh, proposed development does not fit on this site. Um, respectfully, I was in front of this board not too long ago um, where you denied an application because you didn't believe that something fit on that site. None of those concerns are on this one. This one is, there are no variances required. The entrances have been pulled back a significant degree. Um, you heard Mr. Um, Orocho speak of the, the, um, the reduction in impervious surface that's gonna be in here, the added green space, all the buffers are met. This meets every provision of the zoning ordinance without any need for any type of variance. Um, there's plenty of room for this development. There's gonna be less developed space on the property when they're done than what was there before. Um, so we simply think that this fully complies um, with the zoning ordinance and the plans, and again, this area is where the comprehensive plan says growth should go. This is where it says there should be new development because it's one of the town centers. Um, the concept site, the, the next finding is that the property may be served by adequate public facilities um, as provided in section 70.2.2 of the zoning ordinance. Um, I'll draw your attention and it's in the record to all the agency approvals that are in there. There are no outstanding issues with any of the county or state agencies for this project. There are comments from METCOM, State Highway, Soil Conservation District, Department of Natural Resources, uh, DPW, and of course, Land Use and Growth Management um, has reviewed this, and the Health Department. All of those agencies have said that this project meets their requirements and their, their code requirements. Um, and we appreciated the comments of the Director of Public Works that spoke, Mr. Gotch, as he shared with you the improvements that we're doing not only will improve Oaks Road and the and the queuing that occurs there now that it's going to reduce what's already happening there. It will also correct a problem on Route 5 that my client did not cause and that he's willing to make that intersection more operational even though it's not required by the ordinance. Now I know this board does not hear concept site plans all, the, all that often because you only hear them at, at appeal time, but one of the things that I hear constantly at the Planning Commission is that we don't want people just to do the minimum, we want them to try to do other things. You're looking at a developer here that has listened to every request by the Planning Commission, has listened to the concerns of the citizens, and has tried to address them in every way that they can. And a denial of this type of project for this type of developer is something that really can cause a chilling effect in this county for anybody that wants to come in here. This meets all the rules, it meets all the adequate public facilities requirements, and not only may it meet it, we believe it clearly will and that it goes above and beyond what the minimum requirements are. Um, and with this type of project, we think that that uh, lends toward its approval. Um, the, uh, the next finding that we have to do is that it will promote health, safety, and welfare of the general public. Again, I draw your attention to the TEC comments that's um, within a lot of their purviews. Um, you heard the, the desire in this community to have another facility that served E85 fuel. This one will do it. You heard the last uh, public speaker, the last one to get up uh, before the others that spoke uh, multiple times share that it's either California or in other areas that you can get that. There's a segment of our community that wants that. Um, they voice their, their opinions on uh, the, both the, um, the petition that we showed you, um, and that is a service that some members of our community want and that this client heard that and decided they were willing to provide it when they heard that it was a need. They're offering sidewalks around all three sides of it. That's another, um, I heard the gentleman say, why do we need them on, on Route 5? And, and I think reasonable minds can ask that same question. I, I have at times, but it is a push within our county's development system to put more sidewalks out there. This client didn't say, hey, I just wanna put 
it on this one little part. They're willing to put it on all areas. Uh, they're willing to put in a new crosswalk and try to put more stop bars and make that intersection safer than what it is now. And you heard all the citizens say that it's not safe now. Uh, they're, they're willing to do what that takes. Car chargers are another thing. Um, electric vehicles, um, I've sat in a lot of these hearings where people are passionate that that is the wave of our future and we need more of those services here. This would provide those on the other side of Route 5 so people don't have to cross over to Wawa to charge their vehicle if they want it. It's another service that they're willing to provide. And I hope you heard what my client said about those. At the Planning Commission, they asked us to make sure that the infrastructure was in in case they're ever warranted later. In between the time we were there and here, our client went back and made sure they were warranted and now saying they're going to install them um, and you can make that a condition of our approval if you choose to do that so that's the type of, of uh, project that they're trying to run they're listening to the concerns and they're following up on it which I know is sometimes a concern of whether um, operators will do which we believe clearly they're demonstrating that they will um, the next standard is that it adi it's adequately developed recreational and other community amenities uh, provided in accordance with the comprehensive plan and the zoning ordinance again some of the items I've already spoken on, the crosswalks, the sidewalks, the electric car chargers. There's a bike rack uh, shown on the site plans that's there uh, for cyclists. Um, it, it is another gas station on that side of the road that will have a more modern entrance to get in and off of after Route 5. And a lot of citizens want that. It'll have a Starbucks. Um, and Starbucks generally employ about 30 people um, per store and have a lot of benefits that other businesses don't provide. It's another business that wants to come to our community, sees a market for it, sees that people want it here or they wouldn't come here, um, and they're willing to invest in our, in our community. Um, and that Starbucks themselves are meeting places for a lot of people um, where they can go and, and sit and have a space to be in. That's another uh, need that it'll serve in the community. The last standard is that it's consistent with the Chapter 62 design standards of the um, zoning ordinance. 62.6 um, .6 of the zoning ordinance talks about commercial mixed-use development. Um, the requirements essentially relate to height and the kind of design, both the design features exteriorly and the roof features that are there. Um, this height does not overwhelm the scale of other existing buildings. They're modest um, in height. Uh, the roof design is not flat. That's one of the things our ordinance um, tries not to do it has the features with the with the different angles on it um, and, and again I know this was done some time ago but I think it demonstrates uh, my clients commitment to do this project right when folks looked at the Starbucks and said we don't like that design we don't think that'll fit in our neighborhood go back and redo it that's what they did um, all those things that they're willing to do they're still willing to do you can make them conditions a lot of them are on the site plan now but you can make any of those conditions and my client will be willing to back it up um, Growth is always hard, and and I, I can appreciate and I understand and I respect the opinions of people that live there. We can disagree, but I can respect them. But the bottom line is this is a designated growth area in our county. It's on a main thoroughfare. It is two businesses that want to be here and want to commit uh, to be here. They see a need for the community. They would not be here if it was not warranted. Um, I guarantee you they will be extremely successful businesses. Um, and we believe that every concern that has been raised, my client has tried to address within their project. You know, if the concern is we don't want you there, my client can't address that. But within the design of the project, um, they've tried to address every concern we've heard from the public and from the board members after we've gone. Um, so we'd ask that you consider that. We believe we clearly meet those five standards of concept site plan approval. Um, we'd ask that you consider the evidence that you've heard here tonight. Again, we'd ask that all the documents on board docs be made part of this record. Um, and we'd ask that you just consider our application favorably tonight. We appreciate your time. Any final questions? Yeah. I have some. I do have two questions. I'm sorry. Uh, thanks, Ms. Longmore. Sure. Um, the traffic study, was that only done on Route 5 and not Charlotte Hall Road? Now, I can have Ms. Chandler, if we want to get that on the record. Jackie, can you speak? It, it was not just 5, but she can, I'll let her testify since she's under a. Yes, again, Jackie Chandler with Traffic Concepts. Yes, the traffic study looked at all, all legs of um, Charlotte Hall, Oaks, and five. And five. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And from the boundary line on the back of the 
of the uh, piece of land, then there's a road. Where, how close is the nearest house? Because we were talking, they are talking about noise and lights. Um, Nelson, I don't know if maybe you can speak to, to that. We might need the, a different version of the site plan. I can't see it on this one. One of the aerials from the original? Yeah, from the staff report. I maybe. can't tell on this map. Would you like to go to from where, Miss Lynn? Which house would you like to go to from where? The the back of uh, the land, the piece of land of Wentworth or whatever they call it. Mm -hmm. now, to the then it's uh, Charlotte Hall Road, and then there's a house. Like apparently uh -uh. the lady's house. Who's yeah, that one. Okay. I'm thinking. How far is that from the back of the land where they want to put? Royal Farms. So. You mean from the from the building? Yeah. Can, yeah. Can you give an estimate of that, Nelson? So from the you from the to. building, the Royal Farms building to that house. Yeah. So the location of the uh, the Royal Farms. If if you leave that plan up, and I'll try to eyeball it in the sense of where where it's where it's falling. Um, if you look at the the picture there, the, what's depicted there is the, the uh, wet verse as it was uh, laid. The main building, or it, it's, it really was multiple buildings, but if you see the, where the cursor is right now, and if the cursor, cursor moves up to the top of the building and over to that little appendage uh, that's to the west or left, right? That would be approximately the location of the Royal Farms okay. that, to be constructed. So you can see from the corner, it's quite a distance away. And then, and then from it, because the area where the, where, um, as was mentioned, uh, that there's three parcels there and the existing house is shown at the corner. The existing house, that little triangle area to the right of it, and then m most of that area is all the septic area. That's a that, green area. Yeah, exactly. And so the building ends up being set back off the off the road and down uh, almost in the middle, per se, of the entire parcel to be developed. And so the building is going to be quite a distance away from the, you know, from the house relative to the entire piece as will be developed. If that answers it. Can you give me like an estimated distance? Um, I can try. A measuring tool. What it's measure. We can use to. So that distance, that triangle, that from the corner. Okay, where would you like me to measure from? Yeah, I was gonna say it, it is uh, four. It's about a 570 feet from the corner. Okay. Approximately, the building to the to the farthest west, farthest southwesterly corner the, where the building would be located is approximately 550, 570. Okay. Okay. Right. Thanks. Um. <clears throat> All right. Let me do this the way. Fifty scale. So the actual property lines, the uh, the those um, if. Where this, yeah, if you go back to that. So where the house, where the existing house is, that corner mm -hmm. lot, that property line from the corner to where it meets the other odd shape kind of triangle piece, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that distance is 200, and this is surveyed and actually part of an out there survey uh, that we use. So that's a 285 feet. So that property line is that's 285 cool. feet. Then the next length to the triangle is 296.9, so let's call it 297. And I just did quick math, and that's where I got the 570-ish dimension, because if you just take that line and drop it down, this being the same distance in where the building is proposed, that's approximately the, the length of the building. It could be 500 feet, again, to the closest corner, but I picked the center of the building. The closest corner might be 500 feet. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? I have questions for Director Gorsh. Public Works Director, can we talk to him? Yes, no. 
Louder. I said I have questions for a public works director if we could talk to him. How do you say your last name? So I don't Gotch. Miss Gotch. Uh, my apologies. So we've heard a lot of testimony in here about traffic, and that falls directly in your department, right, sir? Correct. Okay. These folks have concerns, and they have concerns about what's happening on the road right behind the site. Would you be available to listen to some of their concerns tonight after this meeting is over? Sure. We, right. Just so you know, we, we did a traffic, uh, a speed study on that portion of the road. And the, uh, there are speeders out there. So we look at the 85, 85th percentile. You can laugh if you want to, but this is just data. We, we, the 85, 85th percentile speed, we look and see what, what they're driving, and they were, it's an excessive speed. Right. Uh, some, some cars were going way fast. Yeah. They kill somebody. Um, so what we do when we get a speed study and we recognize speeding, not only do we know what the speeds are, we know what the time that the people are speeding. So we send that to the sheriff and say, here's the best time to go catch people, issue citations. Well, We've I think, done that. I think some other things that would probably be concerned is, uh, and probably have questions on our future plans for that road and other things that would help make that road a little bit safer. So if the, our friends and neighbors sitting in the audience have questions for you, if you'd be willing to stick around and answer those, I'm sure they'll appreciate it, and they will be nice and respectful, I'm sure. <laughs> you better be. <laughs> All right. Thanks. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? Is oh, wait. I, sorry, I do have one more question. Um, one of the questions they brought up was noise abatement. I know we have talked about that in other site plans. I didn't hear it mentioned in this site plan. Um, I know they consider this distance being 500 feet but there is a natural area. Do we understand how noise is gonna travel across that flat area uh, to houses on the other side? Has that been looked at? Uh, I mean, certainly the, the question of idling vehicles that was brought up, is that contributing to the noise? Uh, my client stands committed to putting the signs up that there be no idling allowed and, and try to enforce it that way to at least put that out there. Um, I think the distance does help that. They do have all the buffers that are required too, so there will be some buffering. There is the septic area that's more open and, and it is required to be by the health department um, in order to have a septic system. Um, there are some plannings on the edge of it. If you look at the planning agreement, there, there's the wide swath in the middle. So, so those are the ways that we uh, we hope that, that some of the noise will be addressed, as well as the lighting that Mr. Rocha um, talked about, that uh, those designs, the modern designs, are required to keep the light on the site, and, and they're working to do both of those in tandem, because those often come up together, those two concerns. All right, thank you. So um, on that, we're looking at this Sorry, oh, plan. plan, the mitigation there behind the open green area, it doesn't go like all the way to the end of that that triangle. Um, right yeah, right there. Yeah, it might have to pull so, the landscaping plan. Yeah, yeah the landscaping. so what kind of landscaping plan have, do they have? I don't think we've touched on that at all, which may oh, we didn't. Yeah. help with the noise and maybe even lighting if it's, well, well yeah. let's put it tall lights. If you, um, I don't know what slide number, there is the, uh, landscape sketch plan that it was like was three or four yeah. yeah that one yeah so that shows you know some of the plannings behind the building you can see yeah. uh, several are designed in there there's some down on the corner and there's some you know along the side there so i think they put as much as they could and at the same time preserving the septic and those are all under four feet right um, I don't have the scale here. Uh, Mr. Rocha could speak to the exact design, I think, better than I could, because it was his company that, what was that the did it. Uh, uh, question? I was asking the height of the greenery behind the property there on your line. Okay, so so depending on what the species is and so forth, if they're, uh, if they're um, uh, trees, uh, they're usually two-inch calipers, so they're, they're planted usually at two-inch or about five feet in height. 
approximate to you know and grow larger. Uh, now, just one thing about a man the uh, uh, the area that doesn't seem like there's any more green provided. We are hoping to save those huge pine trees that are there. On we're, we're going to try to retain those. That's um, through that area there. Um, the landscaping stops, there's the existing trees that are there, which are gonna to try to save those trees. Um, one of the things about the way the septic is gonna run from uh, Starbucks to uh, Starbucks to the septic field, it's gonna be a, a small force main that if we have to, to save the trees, we may have to uh, directional drill it. So again, that's a construction thing going down the road, but, but uh, we'll try to maintain those. One of the conflicts we had it, that will, work out at site plan is that there was a request for the sidewalk and the sidewalk is gonna be up against the road and the trees are there. So we may have to get creative and meander the walk so that we can save as many trees as we can. But the intent was to try to save Try to save those. <coughs> no, we, we finished the public, public comment portion. We're, uh, uh, try to save those trees as best we can that are existing and then replant what we, we can't save. Any other questions? No. no thank you. In that case, um, we'll now move to the Thanks. discussion and decision portion of the hearing for the board members. Anybody want to start us off? <clears throat> so I took a look at the um, surveys. I went through the one with 700 signatures, um, and forgive me if it looked like I wasn't listening to people when they were talking, I was. Could, could you speak up, please? <clears throat> yeah, I said I went through the surveys um, using that wonderful tool, Google. I know it's not 100%, but I was able to find like five or six out of the 700 that appeared like they were from this area. Um, that doesn't mean that more aren't, and nor did I go through all 700, I only spot checked. But there were five or six who, according to Google, Facebook, and whatnot, appeared like they were real people. With the 2025, they all got their addresses listed. So a lot of people were in favor of the E85. I understand that. I understand you gotta drive a long way to get it, but at the same time, it is off the internet, so we'll see. I listened to the man, he talked about no additional traffic. I agree with that, there's no additional traffic there. Uh, people may stop, may not stop, but as far as additional traffic, there's, there's I don't I see whether there'd be no additional traffic at all. And most of the people talked about people not stopping at stop signs. Well, I'm, I'm sorry about that. That's irrelevant to what we're doing here. Yeah. Uh, it's irrelevant to, to the, the discussion whether they have or not. And it, it is a town center. It's where growth is supposed to be, and it's zoned correctly. One of the counter things to the additional traffic, he's right, it won't generate any additional traffic, but now that dynamic has changed. Where Wentworth was a place where people would come in, stop, spend time. And we've had this discussion before with other areas. Now you've got a place where people are coming through, spending a lot less time, so you're having a higher volume go in and out the exits right there. So I think that's one of the things when people are discussing, and this is, what I think they're saying. It may not be what they're saying. No additional cars, though. <clears throat> there's no additional cars, but there's additional traffic because now those cars are spending less time stopping and doing something else. So you've got more volume, even though you've got the same number of cars, you've got more volume right in that tiny little area. So I think that's where people are confusing the two or looking at the two. Oh, I, I guess look, looking at the plan, I mean, I, I thought the developer has <coughs> done a good job in doing what the Planning Commission has asked and also to meet the requirements of uh, the zoning ordinance. Well, I gotta admit, this, this company, out of the limited time I've been on this board, has been one of the most amenable to doing things that people have asked them to do. We've had other companies come in here and the situation in the room be hostile very hostile, and that um, company going, well, I'm within my rights, pack sand, 
talking to their neighbors. I don't think this company is doing that. I think this company is really trying to help out in ways that they can help out mm -hmm. and still accomplish what they need to do. And I bet if there was more conversations between neighbors and neighbors, business, I bet they would find more common ground. The other piece of this has to be the county has to come in and help out in this too. And that's to help keep the neighbors safe um, and through the road work. That's why I asked the public works director to talk to people. So I don't see this company as being as hostile <clears throat> just trying to make a buck as we have seen other companies be come through here. So I'm glad that they're trying to work with the community and trying to work with the boards and doing what's requested of them. That's, that's kind of refreshing to see. Any comments down this end? I, I, uh, I appreciate the sincerity of the public and, and I'm positive and I go through there all the time myself that there's <laughs> people speeding and using that back road that shouldn't be using that back road. And all I can say to that is we, this is an election year and we I think we have a new sheriff and he's out and about campaigning. It's be a good time to bend his ear and and let him know your concerns. Because I I you know, I I really believe that you're sincere and it's truthful what you're saying and it, it is a problem. Well. Okay. That being said, um, I think the Royal Farms project is one of the better projects we've seen come in front of us uh, as far as trying to take care of the public and and they, they've been over backwards, you know, tr trying to do the right thing here. So, I was, you know, I, I commend them. No. I have been on that portion of the trail and I've almost been hit with my kids on that portion of the trail. So. I see the concerns there too. That's that's an interesting area, to say the least. One of the things I guess I'd like to ask Jim to do with the, with the Recreation and Parks Department is to look at look at those crossings. Not necessarily this one alone, but the others up and down the trail. Um, I'm just afraid that we may be given bikers, hikers, joggers a false sense of security when they get to one of these locations and they see a crosswalk. And cars got to stop when you're in a crosswalk. But you know, if, if, if they really don't, I mean, I like to see that done better throughout the whole county. And, and for this particular project, I'd like to see a condition added if, if, if it's decided to approve it, that um, the, the applicant work with the county, Recreation and Parks and Public Works, to put up some flashing lights up there, some morning lights, at least something up there right now. Yeah. Right. So I um, I do agree with uh, Mr. Modensky. I, I know that everyone is very passionate and I, I personally think we have a responsibility to listen to, to the community. Um, the comp the uh, Royal Farms or Joe Blow or whoever, they always meet and try to meet the minimum requirements that, that are set forward. Um, in this case, I do think that you have gone above and beyond to try to meet. Um, I do still have concerns about, it's not Route 5 that they're concerned about, it's, Charlotte, it's the uh, old Charlotte Hall Road. And nothing has been done to address that. Everything's been done to address the Route 5 side. And that's what, you keep bringing it back, and you keep bringing it back, but you bring it to the wrong side of the road. You bring it to Route 5, and they're not concerned about 5. It's old, it's old Charlotte Hall. Um, they're also concerned about um, a 24-hour service that has not been in that area. Um, that flex fuel, the 85, no, talk about neighbors talking to neighbors. Maybe someone should talk to Wawa. Maybe they can get the 85, and Royal Farms can find some place else down, <coughs> farther down Route 5 that would be more advantageous to you and more acceptable to the community. Um, I don't think anyone's against the Royal Farms or the, and we've only talked about Royal Farms. We really haven't talked about Starbucks and. I happen to like Starbucks, 
but I have to wait every single time because there's always an increase in traffic there. And the traffic that they are talking about is not on Route 5, it's on Route, it's on uh, Old Charlotte Hall Road. I, um, I don't know how I'm gonna vote on this one. <laughs> it's, it's tough. But I do think we do have a responsibility to listen to the community too. And their concerns. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to make a motion? Um, before you talk about a motion, I mean consensus here. Do we have to incorporate the? Uh, because I agree with them. The seven conditions that the planning commission had put on it. Do we have to, or is that part of the plan now? Um, yes. Yeah, so if you want to, if you want to make that part of your order, they should be uh, incorporated into the motion. Yes. Yes. They should be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense to specifically incorporate those. Do you have to say each one, or do, can you just say the? I think you can refer to them in in bulk, and then also if there's another condition that you want to put on it, including the the flashing lights at the um, at the uh, trail, you want to certainly mention that as well. Okay. But you you I can like you can refer to those those items um, from the planning commission, uh, just as as. Uh, you know, the list from the Planning Commission. Okay. I have like a probably crazy question to ask council. Um, so the Planning Commission turned it down. With, then they came back with the conditions that they gave them, but they turned it down a second time, correct? Mm -mm. Yes. Right. No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. That's not correct, is it? They had, they had a public hearing. Yeah. And then the planning commission heard, they heard from the public and they made seven or so conditions. Then they came back for a second time. Planning commission didn't vote the first time. And then the second time they came back, right. the applicant had made all of those changes. And, they and then they- that, that, That's accurate, yes. And then yes. they turned them down. Right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that's accurate. Correct. Even after they had made yep. the- Why? I'm not on the planning commission. Just, so, and, that's and a um, question. Just, um, remember, as was stated at the beginning of this proceeding, we're a, a de novo proceeding, which right, means we're right. a new proceeding. So we're not okay. we're not reviewing or, or uh, voting on the planning commission's findings. We're reviewing and voting on the application that was submitted tonight, along with the the public comment and the opposition. Thank you for reminding me. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, so we're the, we're just here to approve the site plan. Concept site plan. The concept type site plan. But we may revisit it again down the road. If if something doesn't So the um <clears throat> as I understand the, the the process and Mr. Hunt can correct me if I'm not correct, um the, the project would then move on through to final site plan, which would be um uh, in his purview, but it wouldn't come back to us unless it needs some kind of variance or, or some kind of uh, other other uh, proceeding that's within our jurisdiction. I'd like to remind you, you're still under oath. I'm using growth management. That's correct. They will revise the concept plan to show additional engineering. They won't change the things that you've seen tonight as far as building size, building location, sidewalks, all those things. It's primarily going to be stormwater um, detailed calculations to be sure that it works. It was raised tonight that if all the agencies come back with approvals on the major site plan, for some reason, I were, as planning director, to deny it. At that point, the major site plan could be reappealed or appealed anew to the Board of Appeals, as was stated tonight. Thank you. That's what I thought. Yep. Okay. What? You ready? Yep. Uh, in the matter of ZAAP number 20-132-00003, 3 notch commercial concept site plan, having accepted the staff report and having made a finding 
that the objectives of section 60.6 of the comprehensive zoning ordinance have been met and noting that the refer referenced project has met all requirements for concept approval. I move that the concept site plan be approved with the uh, one condition that the list of seven conditions proposed by the planning commission be part of this and also that uh, the flashing signals the bike flashing signal at the at the uh, well and enhance trail. enhance trail right work with the county and, and enhance enhance the safety at the trail there you go that'd be the second condition i second it so let me just ask a question and clarification. So when we when we say enhance the safety of the trail, do we want to say precisely what we want the applicant to do with respect to the flashing lights, or do we want to? I don't just know. That we, I don't know that we can do that. Okay. Okay. I just want to clarify. I don't know. That, you know, if we say flashing lights and and they don't they don't do it. Made the offer. I, I know. I just don't know if we can force the county to do something. And make oh, it a, oh, I see your point. Yeah, yeah. Make it a condition. Correct. If, if, if the county will agree, yes. Right. If the county agrees, okay. that would be right, fine. Right, right. right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So how will the condition read? Will it mention specific improvements or will it just say enhance the safety? So if I understand the, the condition, it would be to work with the county to enhance the safety of the uh, trail crossing uh, to include flashing lights if the county will agree. Right, okay, that, that's good. Okay. All right, okay. You have a motion, do I have a second? Second, I have a second. Okay, all in favor, Mr. Bradley. Aye. Richardson. Yes. Mr. Knowski, yes. Lynn. Aye. Yes. Okay. An order reflecting the board's decision will be prepared by staff and signed by the board within 60 days. A 30 day period following the date the order is signed during which an aggrieved party may appeal to the board's decision to the circuit court. The recording secretary will mail you a copy of the order when it's been signed. Congratulations, good luck with the project. Um, I think we have a set of minutes from July 14th, 2022. Somebody would like to make a motion to approve. Let's make a motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, the next meeting is next week in which we have an appeal of the director's decision. Thank you. And it should be a short meeting? Sure, that's what he's gonna say. Sure, he's gonna say that. Um, okay, so that, that, that will be it. Um, one of the things I discussed with some of the staff before the meeting, and the board might wanna pipe in, and the board might wanna pipe in, but this is gonna be the third month where we've had three meetings in a row. Uh, I'd like to go back to where we had a meeting on the second and fourth Thursday of the month. And unless something strange really came back up. The second and fourth works good for me because I've got a meeting with the Marine Corps on the first and third, so that fits my schedule very well. Yeah, I mean, if, if I would ask the staff to look at that, see what we've got to do to do that. <coughs> I think we're having an attorney discussion on that right now. Yeah, I think one of our problems is we, we keep, uh, and through no fault of our own, we've continued a, a number of items, and that creates the need for additional dates. Well, what I, what, what I, no, I don't think so. Um, well, my own opinion. But what I think we should have done when I couldn't make it or when the Zoom wasn't working quite right, that we decided we weren't gonna have a meeting, but there was a quorum that night, there were four people. Yeah, and I've actually, I've wondered that myself, if we should get more uh, proactive with, con not continuing with, with holding those meetings, even though there may not be 
a full board. Um, we've uh, traditionally been given the applicants the, the option to ask for a continuance and we've been liberally giving those continuances but um, it does result in a log jam to our uh, to our schedule yes. as we go forward so we just put them off for I guess we can't we're limited on how far we can yeah meetings off yeah um, why would we deny a continuance if they're asking because they do not want a two two tie I mean why would we do that? Why would we tell an applicant they couldn't get a continuance if it's a right two to ask? two vote? It's a tie and it's right. a denial. Right. It's not an approval. Right. I understand that. But being the applicant out there, if I came and said I don't like these odds, I want to ask for a continuance, and then we say no, you can't have the continuance. Then why are we having a mask anyway? So I think one of the things we have to continue, we have to consider, and certainly we can go forward with a meeting so long as we have a quorum, of course. We need to consider the efficiency of this board too, and sometimes I think we just get so many things backed up that we end up with these, uh, you know, with these long and, and, and numerous meetings. I mean, that's just my mm -hmm. sort of response to that. I, I don't have a strong feeling either way. Hey guys. No vacation, no survey. We're going to get this done. <laughs> it's Stacy that does it. Yeah, no, it's a joint, joint effort. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the number of meetings we're you holding. Know, did this. you have something to add? Nothing other than uh, we can adjust the agenda so long as it all meets with the open meetings requirements, or not the agenda, but the schedule. Um, we can work with staff and, and you all to find a, um, or perhaps more meetings than we have on the schedule. But so long as, again, all the open meetings requirements are met, I don't see a problem with it. Okay. Uh, is everybody that's here is, is also all right with it. If, well, so obviously we're Anything else for the good of the cause? Make a motion. We adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Savage.